Oh, <laughs> windows are all over the place. <laughs> Kia ora, everyone. Uh, I'm going to have to fix some windows real quick. <laughs> oh, dear. What a start. Tech issues straight off the bat. It wouldn't be a stream if it weren't any tech issues. Yeah. Are we missing someone? Is everyone here? Oh, no, they're just all over the shop. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. I'm not muted. Jeez. Uh, what happened there? Hold on, everyone. Oh, classic. Classic. It happens. I, I wonder if I've used the windows, if the windows I used were like referencing rather than um, copied. Mayhaps. Mayhaps. That is, that is phenomenal. Straight away. Is your window the same size? Because sometimes I make that mistake. Uh, like sometimes I like yeah. open it up, do my windows and then open chat and then everything moves slightly to the left. Oh, maybe, maybe I've moved some stuff. I don't think, I can't remember. I think, who knows? Here we are, we're all good now though. We're all in our right spaces. Kia ora everyone. Hi. Welcome to our stream. Our D&D &D adventure. Orchids of the Invisible Mountain. And we are fundraising for Sea Shepherd. Woof. If you don't know, Sea Shepherd. Uh, I've got a command for that. Sea Shepherd. Uh, is a marine conservation group um, that go out and investigate illegal fishing and illegal ocean practices like um, whaling in the Antarctic Ocean. Um, there's also things like uh, the Grind and the Faroe Islands. Uh, and they just bring to the front of uh, in, into media these kind of practices and hopefully they get them shut down. Uh, they've got a very large navy called Neptune's Navy, which requires fuel. Uh, that's that's the, um, the not the shore team. The shore team do beach cleans and fundraising like we're doing tonight. Um, and the actual navy go out and do all the sort of like at sea stuff. So um, if you can donate, that'd be good. You can affect the game by going to the Tiltify page on the rewards. And you can affect the game by purchasing, donating and purchasing a D6 for a player or myself, advantage, disadvantage, and 2D6. So the um, uh, it'll pop up and it'll tell me who's donated and you can put a message on who do you want that specific reward to go to. So yeah, send loads to me because we played last night and I, got, I didn't get many. I wasn't the DM though, but it was all good. So, um, and it was going to a good cause. So, uh, I think, um, what else is there? We've got giveaway, which will be running soon. So we've got three codes to give away tonight on the stream. We've got um, a Tome of Heroes by Cobalt Press. These are all Roll20 codes. Uh, we've also got uh, this package, uh, Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel. Uh, on Roll20, which is awesome. And we also have uh, another biggie called the Nether Deep. So if you're into Critical Role, it's that uh, campaign setting as well, which is awesome. And what else have we got going on? Now, uh, I, I won't say anything yet, but you might see it soon. <laughs> and you might, might be going, that's amazing. But we'll get around to that in a sec. Um, I'm also, we're also auctioning some items one of them which you will hear about soon. But I'll be rebinding the player's handbook and also rebinding, custom binding, a physical copy 
of Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel. So if you want to see the kind of uh, thing you, you'll be getting, if you, this is my player's D&D player's handbook, which mm. I've rebound uh, and laser etched. So yeah, uh, this one I took to D&D Live in 2019. It got signed by lots of people. <gasps> Um, yeah, and it comes. You get bookmarks. Choose. So, if you do, if you are the highest um, bidder, I uh, will have a conversation. You'd be able to choose what color leather you want. Uh, if you want leather, you can have cloth. Um, what what color gilding? This one's not gilded, but the uh, it will gild the edges. What color bookmarks and the headbanding, which goes the stuff that goes right in the spine up in there. Uh, the headbanding. What color that of that you would want? So, that's one of the um, the auction items so yeah um nice to see everyone in chat we're gonna have a great game uh it's an amazing setting and uh, i've it, been itching to play it this particular adventure is the highest level adventure in the book um and my players have been going to town they've been building their characters for well, six weeks now i think it is and they are ready to kick some ass they are so ready um, but we're going to go around. We're going to introduce them now. Um, so, players, uh, we'll go around. If you want to say who you are, where people can find you. Oh, also, uh, I'm Evan. Uh, my pronouns are uh, he, him. And, um, yeah, so the, there'll be little, you'll be able to read our name tabs as well. So I'm going to go around anti-clockwise and starting with Jacob Outlawed Games. Hi, everyone. I'm Jacob. Uh... I, I'm a forever DM who's really grateful to, to come and play. Um, I'm also Evan's brother in real life. Uh, I am playing uh, Dardendrian Dravidian Draxocelot, the uh, cleric. I heal things. Uh, I come from a background of medical professionals and I'm kind of like on a spiritual journey to, to learn how to save lives across the realms. And I've uh, ended up on the Radiant Citadel, learning about the healing properties of the Aurora Diamond and the House of Convalescence. Hell yeah. Look at this! Oh, look at the cosplay! Oh, so good. So good. Um, thank you so much, bro. Um, and below you, we have got Taylor. Hi, I'm Taylor. My pronouns are she, her. You can find me on Twitter at Taylor and NX. I'm a TTRPG editor and a DD adventure writer slash game designer. Uh, tonight I'm playing Murada, the Tabaxi abjuration wizard with dreams of being a shield bearer. Big dreams, big dreams. Big dreams. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm not going to kill or fight this time. I'm just, I'm just going to protect people. I promise. <laughs> Don't make those promises you can't keep, Murata. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why you haven't been promoted yet. One day, one day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, and if we go along, along the bottom, and uh, we've got Ray. It's me. I'm really glad that the police car ended its siren as you came to me. That's super helpful. Um, hey, I'm Ray. Uh, you can find me at Red Mage Ray on Twitter. I am a professional game master, player, uh, and general content creator for TTRPGs. Um, yeah, you can find me doing all sorts of stuff on all sorts of different channels, and I've been waiting to get into an Evan game for ages, uh, so I am very hyped. Uh, I am playing Dr. Ava Akri, a Shadokai monk, um, who is essentially a reverse dungeoneer. She's an archaeologist who um, uh, essentially helps in researching items, but also helps in returning items to the place they should be, and has made many a friend and enemy in that profession as well. Um, oh, uh, he, they, she, don't really mind which, just uh, mix it up for myself, and Ava is she, they. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ray. And if you can, can you just um, boost your mic just a touch for us? Thank you. Um, and last but certainly not least, wonderful Leone. Hello, everybody. I am Leone, also known as Glass and Gadgets. You may have seen me around on the interwebs in various places at Glass and Gadgets because marketing is a thing and I used to be a marketer. 
for 17 years. I am no longer a marketer, though. You may catch me as the producer for Into the Motherlands. I am also a Gen Con online producer. You may have also caught my writing in the remakes of Destroy All Humans 1 and 2. Uh, as I am a game dev and I have been a game dev for eight years and that's all my long credentials. I am semi-retired from the TTRPG sphere. I am the resident watcher. Haha, -ha, I have taken oath of the watchers today because it is most fitting. Today I am playing Faze Lari, the first shard of Ceylon, a former planar trapped in a scourge Azamar's body, brought here to the Radiant Citadel against their uh, will. Uh, they very much uh, destroyed the person or should I say smote the person that brought them here against the will but sadly they are trapped and they are looking for a way home uh, the fact that they are trapped here they're going to make every it everybody's problem and I enjoy doing this I have been winding up Evan all week about how I'm going to smite and destroy all his encounters as I am min maxed to the max as a paladin seven and a sorcerer seven and that's everything about me oh I make things yeah, I don't know if anyone's noticed. But you... <laughs> I don't know if anyone's noticed. I, I make stuff. I make, I make things. Just casually, you know. Just casually. Uh, I, what did you describe it? You describe it as a biblically accurate angel. Was that right? Yes. Yeah, I'm a biblically accurate Azamar. Azamar. Yeah. <laughs> so I love it so much. It's incredible. It's incredible. Um, so. Uh, straight off the bat, um, uh, Yoni, Jacob, and Taylor, I'm going to give you DM inspiration for your cosplays. Ray, I mean, I like, you look great. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know if you look any different from any other day. That's 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 all I'm saying. No, 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 please. <laughs> Look at the amount of effort and I know. quality that has gone into all of this. Like, no incredible. It's incredible. Perfect. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so the headpiece uh, and the uh, ching, ching, ching finger gauntlet uh, that Gloss is wearing is going to be one of the auctionable items. So keep an eye on Twitter um, for if you want to, if you want that for you, for your own cosplay. It could oh, be yours. It could be yours. <laughs> Well, if you just want to wear it on the house. <laughs> I'm going to bankrupt myself. <laughs> That's a muff for life. Fantastic. Oh, and thanks, Rafi, for the cheer. That's incredible. Thank you so much. Um, right. Okay. So, and I'm um, Evan, a.k.a. Mori Nerd on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, I'm a GM for Hire, and I produce... Um, TTRPG streams infrequently. I don't have a stream schedule. I'm not about that life. Uh, just as and when, and when I can rope good people into playing games with me. <laughs> That's what I'm about. Excellent. So, um, should we play some D&D? I don't think I've forgotten anything. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think we're Let's good to go. go. Let's go. Let's go, gamers. Let's go, gamers. Esports. Right. We are... Uh, at the Radiant Citadel itself. Oh, let's get some music on the go. Hold on. I hope it's coming through. We're on the Radiant Citadel. In the heart of the ethereal plane lies the ancient and mysterious city called the Radiant Citadel. Through tradition, cooperation, and ancestral magic, 15 civilizations are bound to this wondrous site. And our heroes live there. Some have been there for a while. Some have recently come here. Some don't want to be here. One of our members comes from one of the civilizations who there's been whisperings. Things aren't going quite so well. There's a discordant feel about their civilization. The land of Atagua. The hero that is from that land, Dr. Drax, because I'm not going to say your full name, <laughs> has had rumors from some of the locals, messages sent, uh, concerned that people are having nightmares, which, you know, people have nightmares all the time. Um, but there's a general unease about the place now. Things are creeping in. People are seeing things. Animals are acting strangely. 
great swathes of savannah are silent where there were birds once. And even sightings of otherworldly creatures. Drax, you brought this to the attention of the Court of Whispers, I believe. And he had an audience with one of the speakers. And you have been tasked with just investigating these rumors. And not sending a huge party out because at the moment it's just rumors. Um, but under the glow of the Aurora Diamond, which as a beacon out into the ethereal plane um, amongst the, the tens of thousands of residents who live there, you've gathered a team and they stand around you now. And you are going to investigate this. On the last night before you hit off, you had a dream as well. And in that dream, you heard one word. Serere. You woke up with a start. It was a name you remember from living in Atagua. It's a location. In the morning? Well, the beginning of the, of the day cycle at the Radiant Citadel. The four of you gather at one of the launch platforms got your supplies do you want to looking around the group do you want to describe what you see I'll go through each of you so we'll, we'll go in reverse order Fessilari what do they see uh, there is a tall feminine presenting woman wearing a silver mask uh, that covers their face uh, they have eight pairs of individual wings that individually move around their silver head, looking in all directions. The eyes move, they blink, they emote, they are displeased. She's fully armoured and she wields a dual sim uh, uh, shimitar glaive and a heavy kite shield with a large eye at the centre of it. That's pretty intense. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I think, uh, Fessilari, you've, you've gathered a bit of a reputation in your short time. Uh, a bit. Uh, yeah, on the, at the Radiant Citadel. Oh. Uh, highly deserved. Highly deserved. Uh, some people are glad to see the back of you, I think. But you, uh, well, you, you can prove them wrong, maybe. Prove them wrong. I don't want to prove them wrong. <laughs> I want to be gone up from this place. Absolutely. Okay. Dr. Eva Akree. What do you look like? In quite the juxtaposition uh, <laughs> to that last description, um, Eva is about 5'9, 5'10 ish. Um, slightly bulkier, like swimmer's build, She's quite lean but still definitely got a bit of body strength there. Um, kind of messy bun that very clearly has been in for a few days of white to grey hair. Um, as a Shadakai, they have quite a um, <clears throat> a pale whitish complexion with the occasional kind of twinkle throughout, uh, almost like freckles sprinkled um wearing very very casual uh just very casual put together modular clothes um very clearly travelers garments that are designed to be taken off or put on in cold or hot weathers um they have quite a large like almost gourd like uh backpack that they carry on their back, but doesn't seem to really weigh them down too much. Um, you see a few tools kind of sticking out. There's a quite a large spade uh, on her back. She's got two pickaxes on her hips. Um, and these 
kind of like metallic curves. There's two kind of like rods of metal that stick out from her hips. Um, and she's also carrying a couple of crossbows and things. But uh, yeah, very kind of just chill, casual dress. Awesome. It seemed very practical. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Most certainly. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, and what do people see when they see Murata? Um, so they see a um, gangly, like six foot tall tabaxi um, that looks less cat like and more like a lioness. Um, she seems to be incredibly underprepared compared to her companions. Um, it's just like a loose fitting, like white blouse. Um, with like a leather waistcoat, like just casual pants and like hiking boots, um, a satchel slung over her shoulder and a like long stick, like a training staff that you would use to practice sparring, um, which has like little carvings in like a circle around the top that is her arcane focus. A little bit of like scruff on her chin, like she didn't like trim her facial hair before we went. That's fine. She likes it that way. I love that. <laughs> Didn't shave. Just on with the mish. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. And uh, what do they see when they uh, when they see Doctor Drax? Uh, yeah. So uh, Drax uh, is a sapphire gem dragon boy. Stands tall at six six and a half feet. Um, the scales like glistening, um, like blue gems, and he is—he's come full kit. Um, any like, if he's everyday life on the on the citadel, he's normally just seen in a in a robe. Um, but today he is kitted out in his uh, adamantine uh, plate armor, his magical oh, weapons and shields. What? Um, heavy crossbow slung across his back and his backpack full of healing kits. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he's tooled up and ready to go. Epic. So, uh, uh, I did allow the players to, to purchase magic items for this. And, uh, yeah, I, we'll see how that goes. I might regret that. But hey, it's done. It's done. Right. So, you get to the launch platform, and looking out, you can see the Concord Jewels, which orbit the Radiant Citadel in ethereal space. They're not attached, they're just out there orbiting. Uh, and they, they are linked to the civilizations uh, which are part of the Radiant Citadel themselves. Um, they all are, are different shapes and colors uh, made from different materials. But the one for Atagua is a yellow quartz. Um, and these are huge structures um, f- just floating in space. You board the platform and a sphere boom, just covers over you. And without any so- sound, it slowly leaves the Radiant Citadel. You float, you start floating away and accelerating until you're actually just out in ethereal space. You can see off in the distance the Keening Gloam, a chaotic vortex of energy that people don't know about, but no one's been in. Well, they've been in, but no one's escaped. Um, it's a it's an area of intense study. The auroral diamond itself changes its color as you leave the citadel. It goes from a a warm a yellow, and it takes on a very pale purple color. It's quite significant because. Um, the diamond does change colors, but people uh, don't know why it does and whether it represents the mood or or danger, no one's quite sure yet. 
but you're all it's just the four of you on the platform and you pick up speed you're flying through space you approach the yellow quartz and there's a landing platform there and it alights and you step off you're greeted by a claviger one of the pilots um, of this quartz jewel each jewel has a number up to 10 clavigers who work in shifts to keep an eye on these concord jewels make sure that they um, are kept safe this particular claviger or claviger uh, is a thrycreen seven feet tall iridescent purple and blue shell looks at you mandibles clack <laughs> beckons you in um, and there's a seamless the actual disc that you landed on uh, slots into a seamless kind of platform so items even people who are, uh, use a, a chair can just roll off straight onto the jewel there's no stairs anywhere it's all ramps and beckons you inside you go past the central core which is used for transporting goods um, and livestock to upper ramp to one of the spacious passenger areas um, it's got windows around it and it beckons to the, to, to the seats and in your heads telepathically Please take a seat. We'll be disembarking for Atagua as soon as you're comfortable. There are no other passengers. This is specifically for your mission. I am Zethamoth, and you may reply by thought or vocalization. Either is a fine. I mean, thanks. Appreciate it, Zephy. And I will run up and jump, cross legs, arms back on whatever seats I can, and just, ah, this is the life. And Zephy, uh, sort of like, uh, clacks uh, <laughs> their mandibles. <laughs> Uh, you don't understand what that means, but uh, it doesn't seem threatening whatsoever. They go to one of the, like, it's like a large desk with a window um, and pointing out and starts moving their clawed hands over this desk. Arcane symbols light up on this desk and the Concord Jewel begins to vibrate. It's a circular room with all the seats around. Um, but there is like a, a see-through window that goes around the outside as well. Once you're all seated, Zethamoth operates the desk a bit more, turns around and also sits and you look outside and very slowly you see pinpoints of light you see the radiant citadel move within your vision past and then back again past and then back again and it starts spinning and even though you don't physically feel your body spinning you feel your eyes spinning the lights go down Ooh. and you feel your stomach's lurch like you've jumped off something high like a huge cliff and you just feel your stomach's <gasps> and then all of a sudden the spinning stops and there's a different kind of light coming through the windows. A warm light. Look outside. And 
you're above you're 600 feet above sprawling sugar canes there's you can see paths winding through you can see a village in the distance in your heads you hear we are here and they operate in controls and the jewel descends to the ground you go to the, where the platform landed and Zethi sees you out. Good luck on your mission. I have been asked to give you this and hands it to Murada. Uh It's a small tube about four inches long very light metal I will be returning to this spot periodically but should you need an emergency way out of this plane or to another plane use this scroll and he hands you a scroll of plane shift land the door the like a, a panel slides open and a small ramp descends extends down to the ground as the door opens just a wave of heat hits you it's like woo, heat and sound and humidity and for those of you who have been on the radiant citadel for a, for a long time the atmosphere there is it is constant. It is like air conditioned. It doesn't change. But you are on a material plane and this place is hot. It is muggy. And there is bird sound, insects, there's cicadas going off. You can even hear in the distance like hooting of monkeys. Good luck. Um, and lets you go on your way. As Drax disembarks, he uh, telepathically sends to him, um, thanks driver, and he packs his kit up and strolls off. Nice. I think when Murata steps outside, um, she does a, a secret little happy dance as she tucks the scroll into her spell book and then just does like that nice big cat stretch as she just kind of basks in the sunlight her favorite part of going to the material plane is when she gets to go to the warm places and she just thrives she loves it yeah i mean this is this is the warm places this is like you know high 20s at least um you can just hear that there's you know that constant sound of cicadas going on uh and for those of you not used to it or are in armor you can already feel like you're starting to heat up and sweat phase Laurie practically stumbles off the ramp uh her wings are very flat to her head and her eyes are all blinking out of sync the the spinning was not good with someone with so many eyes <laughs> Excellent. And she already disapproves of the heat. Yeah. Screaming insects. It's like an assault on your senses. Yes, very much so. <laughs> Drex will like extend an arm out and just ask, you know, are, are you well? Are you, can I help? Your hand is battered away as she continues <laughs> on her way. <laughs> Love it. Rude. As soon as you step off, <laughs> as soon as you step off, the Concord uh, jewel uh, retracts um, the ramp, uh, the doors close, and it, it gently lifts off, <laughs> floats up to the uh, into the sky, six hundred feet. Uh, you see it start to spin, and then it just blinks out of existence, and it's gone. And you stood 
on a pathway in the distance. You're surrounded by, the path is surrounded by sugarcane fields. And from on the wind, you can smell cooking sugarcane on the breeze. A head stands. You were close. This is this location is actually very near Sarare. And the village is a bit further down the road. I know this place. And then Drex, like, just holds his shield on the ground and just, like, takes a massive, like, breath and just smelling the wind. Uh, and as he exhales, he says, home. Nice. Uh, well, let's get to the bottom of this, friends. Okay. We are not far. So, in general, each of you, is this a... Does landing here feel like a positive experience or not quite a positive experience? The Drax... Definitely not positive here. <laughs> okay. Eva? Uh, Sorry. Very positive. Okay. Eva, Eva loves traveling all over the place. Fantastic. And I think, uh, I think Murata enjoyed it. Had a stretch. Excellent. So, for the three of you that enjoyed it, this a large, beautiful dragonfly <laughs> lights buzzes around you, uh, does a display of its iridescent body and, and, and flies off. It just seems, it seems so too colourful. It was like, it was so bright. For Fizlari, something has crawled into your boot. Something itchy and scratchy. Yeah. Fizlari starts to make those haunting sounds that got the attention of the residents of <laughs> the Radiant Citadel. <laughs> oh, yeah. And starts hopping around, trying to take off her plated boot. Okay. Um, just your hopping around uh, dislodges this crawly, creepy crawly, uh, and it, it jumps out and, and just crawls away. I don't know. It doesn't crawl away. I attempt to stamp on it. Okay. <laughs> Make me an attack roll. Any attack roll? I Any attack strike. roll. An arm strike would be great. Okay. This creature does not survive. Your stomp. <laughs> and uh, you're free of the, <laughs> the wriggling pest. You continue to walk down the path and about a quarter of a mile, you come, you crest a, a slight hill in the road and you can see a sugar mill in the middle of a village, like it's a small, a small village, but the main structure is a large sugar mill there. It's mass, like a massive wooden shed um, with a pointed thatch roof. It has like window mill um, panes. Um, but the most notable thing is the smoke that's rising from its many chimneys, uh, carrying that smell of cooking sugar cane across. Um, the area is busy with workers sorting through piles of the sugar cane, being very productive. Something strange happens in the air. What is all your passive perceptions? 
Wow, am I really the lowest at 16? <laughs> wow, this is a perceptive party. I okay. mean... <laughs> yeah, look at the eyes. <laughs> I mean... Just so many. <laughs> so many. Well, it, uh, it's not too difficult to notice, but all of you see this kind of like weird shimmer in the air around the mill. It's almost like a glinting of light against something, but there's nothing in the air for the light to glint off. And it vanishes as, as quickly as it appears. A moment later, a scream rings out. <sighs> Followed by a huge crash. <laughs> and a column of smoke rises through the structure's roof, not out the chimney, through the roof, seeping through tiles and thatching. You see workers racing into the building as the smoke billows through the roof and doors. Uh, can... Can, if you want, uh, can you make a... a intelligence arcana or religion check? Whoever's, like, proficient in any of those. Nope. Um, Arcana or religion, was that? Yep. I am proficient in religion. Okay. I don't think my roll came through. Hang on. Uh, Eva got 16. And the doctor got 26. What did you get, um, Marada? I don't, uh, hang on. Ah. Sorry, I, okay. I I told you I would be struggling with the with the interface. That's I okay. Think. There's gonna be like seven that come through at once based on how many times I'm doing <laughs> <it>. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, just for chat, we are using the uh, DnT Beyond Beyond Twenty extension uh, for our characters through to roll twenty. Um, okay. Hang on, here we go. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it the old-fashioned way. You're gonna roll a dice? Yes. I'm just gonna type in twenty-six. There we go. Oh, okay. All right. Twenty-six Arcana. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, sixteen uh, was the DC for um, those people who um, you you think that the the shimmer in the air could have been some kind of planar disturbance, not something related to the Concord Jewel, something different. I am gone. I am booking it towards whatever just happened. Not even talking to anyone about it. I'm just, okay. I'm gone. All right. You book it there. Um, what's everyone else doing? Uh, I am, I am close behind. Like I've pulled out my spell book. I'm quickly flipping through as like um, I'm running and I probably overtake um, Eva with my feline agility. Oh, okay. Do you know? <laughs> oh, that's a very good question. What's your movement speed? Uh, movement speed dash, bonus action dash. I'm moving oh, 195 if you're foot. Oh, yeah, no, I'm barely keeping <laughs> <am> up. Gone. <laughs> oh, so uh, just. I'm not fast, but I will also follow <laughs> at a steady pace. Uh, so we've had a couple of donations come through. Uh, we had Squid Kittens uh, donated to give me disadvantage. Yay! Great. And Papaya. You get to choose when, right? <laughs> you get, yeah, you get to choose when. And Papaya has just has also just a note donated to give advantage to Taylor. Yay! Yay. Hey, thank you, Papaya. Thank you, Papaya. <laughs> no, thank you, Squiddies. <laughs> I saunter. No one explained anything to me, so I'm just like, okay, we're going over here. You know, I've got like my boot half on. I'm trying to like wiggle my foot into it. I saunter over. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Drax, as a Sapphire GM Dragonborn, often just will speak telepathically, send messages telepathically, uh, and as he's following these two sprinting off he, he, he sends a message to Faislari he's like hey, are you a, is something wrong with your foot uh what's we're, we're following the screaming <laughs> uh, 
she answers back just normally whether or not you can hear her or not and just like this plane of filth i have no idea what i'm doing here what is this coolies you wouldn't think coolies in the infinite staircase where the hell am i <laughs> i leave that i'm out of there <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> holy heck Oh, that oh, voice so much yeah who has crawlies in the infinite staircase that's a great question <laughs> <laughs> what that's epic uh okay uh so you book it there um when you reach the mill uh you can see the full scope of the disturb through the broad open doors of the mill, you see the, the interior has collapsed into a great sinkhole. Large overturned kettles spill boiling sugarcane juice across the broken floor, and the fires that once heated those kettles leap up nearby columns and race along the thatch reed roof. Half a dozen workers have fallen into the sinkhole and struggled to clamber out. Thank you for the bits, Alcifer. I, is there any more of these shimmers going on as we're running up and approaching? Um, not, a, not, not that you can see, not, not right now. At the moment, it's just uh, workers in a sinkhole uh, that's like collapsed in the middle of this floor. Uh, let me take you to, let me take you over to a map. Oh my gosh. If, How if far a, down are they? 20 feet. Okay, 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 okay. I might have something for this. <laughs> okay, one sec. Uh, I am going to... I'm going to move us over to roll 20. Ooh. Um, sh and I hopefully, all our window... Oh, man, I'll be so upset if all our face windows are all over the shop again. Who am I playing now? <laughs> Quick, all change! <laughs> oh no, they're in the right place! Hey! Hooray! Yeah. <laughs> <Shop. laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Winning! Oh no, it happened. Can you see that? Hey. I got my camera just vanished. Oh, oh yeah, no. I see that. Oh, this is super cute. Oh, animated. Oh no, not fire. <laughs> Yeah, fire! <laughs> oh no, Taylor's camera's gone. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to fix it. That's all right. Uh, let me move those advantages. So it was advantage for Taylor. Disadvantage for me. Oof. Squiddies. Uh, sorry, question. Um, you we saw workers running into the mill yeah so there were workers outside um sifting through piles of like the sugar cane um but they all ran in um you've run in as well um and there are the workers in there uh who have like just fallen into the sinkhole as well as that as we're trying to put out the fire the sinkhole has appeared Oof. oh okay so these are the ones that actually ran in to help with the fire they've fallen into the sinkhole um so i think yeah i think they have yeah i think that was it that's exactly it. But wait. Let's move over again. I'm going to put your tokens on. On the actual board. Where are you? Creatures. Uh, who was first in? Eva? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, probably. Eva, then Murata, then... Who's faster out of uh, Fessilari or Dardarian? Dardendrian. Dravidian. Draxalet. <laughs> My movement speed is 30 foot. So. Okay. But I wasn't hurrying, so I would say the doctor. A good doctor. All right. 
Can you see? Can you see the map now? Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, I gotta... Oh, then my aura isn't working. I've put it on. Oh, wait. <laughs> Yeah, my aura is not working. Uh, okay, I can fix that. I don't token, please, Larry. Oh, that's big fire. Big fire. Big, that's real big, big fire. fire. That's, that's, that's scary that's a, fire. That's a, I was, I was like, oh, I've got control flames. I can definitely snuff out the, I can't, <laughs> <Nope>. that's too big. <laughs> big. <laughs> Okay, and let's have a look at Fissilari's auras. I love how Morada's tokens like a big cat. How many auras you got? Just one? Yeah, well, there's actually three, but they're all 10 foot. So if you could just give me a 10 foot aura. Is that good? Can you see that? Yes, I can. <laughs> all right, all right, let's go. Okay. Oh, let's pop that out so you don't see my secrets chat show us your secrets no no so uh fyi chat you will see all my gm layers as well on roll 20. please keep it to yourself be on my side for this one okay you can be no, on the true. player's side and like donate and disadvantage me and give all them the good stuff but don't tell them the secrets that you see okay please <laughs> i'm trusting you chat i trust you whoa um there was a donation just come through Ooh. from river and maddie yes. uh and it was give 2d6 to Murata. thanks guys <laughs> <laughs> so many secrets now elsifer no don't do don't you tell them 2d6 holy hell Jeez. Oh, yeah. Hang on, I'm just writing that down. I okay. Got yeah. So uh, if you see the stream, you can see the little tokens on you. Um, there's nothing. There's nothing. Oh, there is something hidden there. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I'm just writing it down on a piece of paper. Okay. Yeah. If you want to look at the stream, you can see little tokens on you and and stuff. But that, but not, not all the time. Right. Who are we? Here we go. Oh, we need some different music because this is not as calm as it should be. Oh, what's this? There's another donation. Um, I'm sorry, I don't want to um, call people's names out because I think you have to use your like actual names in Tiltify. But there was another. Uh, I think, or you can change it, Romaro. Romaro. Um, <gasps> advantage for. Oh, it doesn't say. Just says an advantage. Is it for me? Is it for me? Whoever, the, whoever that was. If it's unnamed, it's you get you, you find his keepers. <laughs> you're, you're all nice. <laughs> <laughs> whoever that was. <laughs> uh, you can you can say in chat. Fire it was advantage for the fire. Okay, I like that. That is perfect. <laughs> advantage for the fire. Oh dear. Advantage for those flames. <laughs> Those adorable flames. Find his keepers. Okay. <laughs> yes, who was it for, Romaro? Who was it for? Also, first time chat, hi. For me! Oh, thank you so much! Yes! Oh, no. Yes, yes, yes. It is for oh, the yes. fire. <laughs> it is for the... Exactly. It is for the fire. Oh, perfect. Hey, guys, can you donate in chat, please, to give everybody else in the party advantage? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they need it. Hey, and we've raised 200 pounds. I mean, this is after some previous fundraising, but we're at 200 pounds. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Yay, let's go. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, you see these workers. Let's get some music on here. You see these workers. 
and they are screaming and scrabbling to get out. There's fire. You can see some of them caught their clothes are caught on fire because they were trying to put it out and the, and the sinkholes appeared and they tumbled into flames. Okay. Um, and they're trying to climb out, but the, the, the ground is very dry and crumbly and they just keep sliding back down. Um, if anyone wants to, has got any nature skills, if you want to make an intelligence check, you can. Nature? Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not proficient in it, but can I do one anyway? Yeah, I mean, you don't have to be proficient, this is just a nature check. I am jumping into the sickle. Okay. Jumping into the sickle. Yep. I got a, I got a twenty-one. Okay, the, the, the soil of the sinkhole doesn't. It looks different. In fact, Drax, you might know. It doesn't look like it is from the area. It looks like it's from somewhere else. Okay, there will be a quick telepathic message to Ava as she's jumping into the hole. Ah, uh, uh, wait, that that doesn't look right. <laughs> Yeah, the, the soil. <laughs> the soil looks dead. It looks devoid of nutrients. It doesn't look like anything could grow in that soil. Ava, as soon as you jump in, uh, th there's chaos going around you of these uh, these commoners, these these workers trying to get out, but a shimmer in the air near you. It looks like. It looks like, uh, like broken glass. It looks like if you were looking at a patch of reality right in front of you, it looks like that that kind of like image of reality has become two dimensional, dimensional, and shattered. And those shatters have like turned, pivoted on their ends. Like angled, like blinds. Shing! And in their place, uh, two creatures. Things that you have not seen before. All right, let me just bring something. Do you want to put your token in the hole? Put your token in the hole. I just wanted to help the people out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> just... What have I got myself into? Alright, let's go. I can just uh, imagine Ava just sprinting up to the hole and doing just like a full dive <laughs> into a roll. Ava is very like instinct first thinking oh. later. <laughs> oh shoot. What is that? What is that? Those, that? those of us by the door, can we see them? Uh, no, they're 20 foot down. Okay. Oh no. You did see the shimmering light. Oh, if I saw the shimmering, shimmering light, can I cast divine senses, please? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Excellent. I would like to do that. All right. This is what you see. No, thank you. And does it ping back as a celestial fiend or undead? One moment. One moment, caller. I love how the picture of it's like, hey. I <laughs> yes. Uh, no, <laughs> it doesn't. Okay. Okay. But as, this, as these appear in front of you, Eva, uh, you hear this weird seven note melody just come from them. They are hard to make out because their form is blurred. Uh, they don't seem to be fully here 
but there are enough here to freak you out a bit. Um, what do they look like? Uh, yeah, they're difficult to see as they're not tethered to one point in space. Blurring in a state of perpetual physical uncertainty. All right. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> well, it's been fun playing with you all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I want everyone to roll initiative. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's go. Oh, wait. We're within 10 feet of Kozari, mm. aren't we? Yep. Yes. Yo, you and Drax are. Gonna... I immediately made a mistake. <laughs> you get a plus five. My token. Ooh, heck. Wait, why do I have advantage? Uh, where? It says on real 20, I have a lot of advantage. I'm not sure why. One minute, let me just quickly. Oh. Uh, there might be a skill. I have a few. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just going to hit control F. Advantage. Uh, Eve. Uh, you're not coming up on the turn or let me select your token and add you. So it's plus four to finish that. Okay, I don't know where I have advantage. Uh, I need to find out how to turn that off. Um, there needs oh. to be a plus ten added to my initiative because five from my initiative and five from Phase Larry, I'm really sorry, it's not. Okay. Plugin is not working. I'll try and get it fixed during the break. Okay, yep. So 24 uh, for Fizzlari, Fizzlari uh, Murata 23, Eva 30. Oh, hold on. That's not going down the right order. Just I just one, sorry. Oh, right. Okay, it was. Um, Fizzlari, uh, uh, check B on 20 extension for. I know there's an advantage roll setting in there. Uh, that might be wrong. Lost music. Okay. All right. So, no, that's not set. Okay, well, we'll take it as 24. You can go first if you like. Uh, well, since nothing pinged and the shadowy one did not yell, I will move 5, 10, 15, 20. 25, 30 foot to be here just to peep into the hole. Uh, the, the horrific forms of these two creatures uh, shimmering in and out of reality uh, meet your many eyes. My many eyes glow and look very, very annoyed. <laughs> they could be friends. Maybe. We'll see. I will end my turn there. Okay. Nice. Murata, what are you doing? Um, using my feline agility, I'm going to double my movement speed to 60, so that way I can clear and get in the hole. All right. And then that's 30, 35, 40, and then I will, um, I'm going to jump Tw down. 20 foot down? I'll jump 20 foot down. Do I need to like make some sort of dex check? No, you're tabaxi. You'll be fine. I've got a climb speed. I don't yeah. even need to jump. I just kind of scale the wall. Okay. Um, down. Uh, I see all the people. I see the terrifying things. Um, and I would like to use my action to, um, oh very strong and there are too many people down here um i am going to just i want to grab i'm you know what no i'm turning over a new leaf i'm not going to attack instead i'm going to uh reach over um to eva and say may i turns like i don't sure I, I cast haste. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, I cast haste. I cast haste on the monk. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I turn to the to the commoner closest to me and says, "Say, don't worry, I'm gonna get you out of here." And like I hold my hands. Yeah. Um, as like like in the little platform thing, like getting ready, because I'm I'm six foot. I know it's like a twenty foot thing, but if someone's at the top, they can like pull. <laughs> yep. Okay. Excellent. All right. That's my Good turn. turn. Nice one, Drax. What are you doing? Uh, so, oh, Drax will have to move up to see what's going on. It's going to be his full movement uh, just to get next to Faislari. Uh, and is this at the top of a staircase leading down to the... That's right. The, the yep. Um, so I can now see everything in the pit. Yep. Um, and how far, how far would we be down like to from us up on the staircase down to where they are down there uh it's only a few feet it's 20 foot oh okay cool yeah to the bottom um, of the hole is 20 foot but well i think i'm pretty confident with ava and Murata being able to handle themselves so my concern would probably be these workers um i'm gonna remove uh my rope from my backpack and as I do so, I will use my action to hitch it. Is there would be somewhere along here I could just hitch the rope to? You're muted though. You're muted, man. Oh, the DM has lost. Nope. That I. Yep. Yep. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's railings and beams all over the place, so you can easily tie your rope to something. Yeah, I'll, I'll find something um, that's not burning and also uh, looks rather structurally sound and, and tie my rope off um, and then just chuck it over into the pit. Nice. Excellent. Uh, chat said you were a little bit quiet too, Jacob. Okay. I don't know if that's for everyone. And is that you done? Uh, yep, that'll be me. Okay. Um, tsh -tsh. Eva, it's your turn. Okay, things escalated, but I'm going to stick to my original plan. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going <clears> to <throat> reach into my gourd. I'm going to pull out a few of my, uh, as an a archaeologist, handy to have tools. Uh, I'm going to pull out a few of the pittens that I have, and I'm just going to jam them nice. the wall as footholds. Yeah, cool. Um, and also put one through the rope that just came down, so it's secure at the bottom as well as the top. Oh, so I'm just gonna smart. Bam, bam, bam. Smart. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, and then seeing... Uh, Marauder come down. I'm gonna turn towards the the creatures and just kind of turn, give her a look of like rolling my eyes and very very poorly hiding the beaming smile across my face. <laughs> um, and just yell at the people down here. It's just, all right, you got a way out. So now you go, and I will bonus action key point patient defense. Ooh, okay. Right. Um, and what does that do? That gives you gives people disadvantage uh, on attacks. Take, or, yeah, I get to take the dodge action. So. The dodge action is sweet. Um, okay. Um, the creature's turn, and uh, just so I don't keep calling it the creature, uh, I'm gonna. They're called whistlers. Uh, and they do kind of like emit this kind of weird whistling tune, this discordant tune. Uh, but sometimes is when they hit a harmony together, it's really weird. Uh, they make this, these noises uh, uh, every now and again. They'll be in harmony and it kind of just gets in your head and you can't seem to shake it. Um, This whistler 
um, here. Turns to the woman beside them. Not the one that you have given uh, like the ropes and the and the pitons to, uh, but the one beside them, this one here, uh, who is screaming uh, with these kind of elongated fingers, just lifts them up, and the head keeps shaking, like, and for a split second, it stops, and you just see a gaping maw open, and it just bites the side of her face and neck and rips out and blood sprays everywhere. And what? And she and it drops the woman down on the floor. Gonna play, uh, <laughs> I'll wait for I'll wait for our uh, safety notes to come back into into Zoom just to make sure that people are okay with that description. Because we can move away. Oh, she's dead. It's yeah, okay. she's okay. We're level fourteen. We can save them. We're yeah. We're good. We're good. It's fine. Fine. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Okay. Ah! I thought oh. we had more time to save the civilians. <laughs> uh, and the whistler on the other side does the same to the person that's beside them as well. <gasps> Two of them are down. Um, and you can see that these whistlers um, are basically... Uh, feeding on these people. Okay. Top of the turn the order. Commoners get a movement turn. Put in? Yeah. Did the, did yeah, let's put the commoners, put commoners at the bottom. Uh, the, at the bottom of the turn. Okay, this one. Yeah, let's get this one out. This one climbs out. They're all screaming. It's absolute chaos down there now. People are freaking out clawing at the walls there's a like climbing on whose hands who had the handheld eva Me. oh no yeah marada I'm yep they'd like, lift. yep they're like jumping into your outstretched arms and like you know you're lifting them up and they get flung up what's your strength uh what is my strength i think i've only got like a plus one to strength <laughs> okay okay <laughs> uh, my strength is 12. That's okay. That, yeah, that's better than average. You can at least hold these people. Um, anyway, uh, you, you might be able to, you can't really launch them that high, uh, but you can at least like use your hands as a foothold. Um, is anyone above you? Drax is a bit above you. Um, so the let's rope, say... There's the rope as well, so... Uh, yeah, so there's the rope. That'll help. So we'll get, uh, we can get two out. We can get two out this round. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Um, okay. Are we allowed to speak? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I just can't even say I've got the last one. Okay. Vesselari, it's your turn. Uh, okay. Um, can I jump? I want to land here. Uh, can you ping I understand it's 20 foot down, but I'd like to jump and land here. Yep. Uh, jump. Yep, have you... If it's just a big jump down into a, into a hole, uh, yep. uh, give me a um, strength athletics check, please. Oh yeah, you nail that. You absolutely nail that. Superhero landing. Right, superhero <laughs> landing. Kaboom. Yeah. After seeing all the blood and everything, I just run. Yeah. Just like put my foot up on the banister, leap off. Ah oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. I actually let go of my shield as I'm like over the top, and I draw my double-bladed scimitar. What? Uh, just is this while it, is this in the air? Yes, in the air. Shit, epic. Excellent, cool. So stick the landing, as as only I could. Um, and this creature right here, I'd like to attack, please. Go for it. Uh, bear with me, because uh, D and D Beyond is is strange. Yeah, can you attack with disadvantage, though, please? 
uh, I will f show. That's not good. <laughs> no thanks. No. Wait, sorry. Where, where is, where is the button? <laughs> oh, oh, actions. There we go. Uh, how do I roll with disadvantage? Um, uh, right click on beyond. That just, that doesn't, that. No, that just tells me to like save. And uh, stuff. Um, hold on. This should be a, uh, a way to roll twice. I'll just press it twice. Okay, that's fair. Twelve. Oh, wait, hold on. That's three times. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll take the first roll and the second roll. Okay. As you, um, so twelve at, at disadvantage. Um, yeah. So uh, you land perfectly, perfectly balanced, poised, um, double scimitar in your hand, and you, swoosh, and you're like, you've got this thing dead to rights. But as your blade goes to cut through it, it's not there. Um, and it just like, zzzz, and it's. It's basically just like a hair's breadth from your blade, but that's enough for you to miss. Hmm. Cool. Very well then. Have you got another um, attack? That was my action, but what is this? Bear with me. <laughs> Do you have a bonus have action? I do. I have many a bonus action. Great. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. And as soon as no. you miss, like as soon as you like you land you, with with edged weapons and you strike at it, um, it, it drops the body of the worker and you just see these kind of glowing otherworldly eyes focus on you. And it makes this horrendous noise and its companion turns and stares at you and also makes a matching noise. Bear with me. It's D&D &D Beyond. Right, so that is actions. I'm sorry I made you guys use it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus actions. There we go. Uh... Okay, I'm going to go for an extra attack for my bonus action. Since I didn't hit, so I don't get three. I have a plan, but we need to save that for next time. We're okay. Uh, da, 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 da. There are too many tabs. So that's another attack from me, please. Um, 27 and 20. Um, okay, so yeah, the, the 20 does hit. Excellent, I like to smite it. Oh, yeah, no, okay. Do you want to <laughs> so roll? I'll, I'll, ro I'll roll some damage and then I'll roll my smite. Okay, so that's my slashing, and here is my divine smite, which is somewhere. In one of these many, many. What level of Smiley Smite are you using? Uh, that is a very good question. I have Divine Smites up to level five. And I will be rolling. We're going to try a level two Divine Smite. I'd like to see how hard these things are. Okay. Uh, no, that's Divine Sense. There are too many attempts. I have too many actions and things. <laughs> I am foiled by my own min maxing. Um, I know the glorious divine smite. Smite the hell out of it. The check going off. <laughs> yes, yes, I will smite, smote it. Oh god, there's so many things. There you go, divine smite. The smiteing has eight. begun. Okay, two d eight. 
two D eights. You know, we're just we're just gonna do this. Eights, D eights. Oh no, the three D dice. Oh, not what? the 3D dice, no. <laughs> Very slowly, cascading <laughs> across the screen. They haven't stopped oh, rolling. Ignore that. <laughs> they roll the dice <laughs> They make some noise, they're making some noise, they're clicky clacking. Oh, they've landed. Oh, <laughs> What's this Kin's uh, eye shot? What's going on there? Who's doing that? Okay, <laughs> it's an eight and a seven. Okay. So that's a 15 radiant damage, please. Uh, on top of the 8 slashing, yeah? On top of the 8 slashing. Okay, 23. All right. Which one? Can you ping which one? Was it the one just to the left of you or...? Yeah, this one. This one. Okay. Nice yep. Okay. It kind of like makes a, a horrible, awful noise. Um, and like... Uh, like a like a almost like a, a dull silver kind of like blood splashes out of it or some kind of liquid splashes out of it. Yeah. Was it uh, you done? Maybe. I'm just double checking my very special sword. Because sometimes under very special circumstances, I get an extra attack. Okay for using this sword and what is the circumstances when it's wielded in two hands which it is uh i guess one ac and da -da 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 -da. Beyond, da -da beyond. Uh, also... Oh, no, no, it's only part of the attack action. Oh, okay. Very well. That is it. That is all for my turn. Okay, also, uh, thanks for the follow, Remo of the Realm. Um, and also, uh, I've started a giveaway. So, for one of the codes, uh, for Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel on Roll20, uh, as part of the Roll20 Ambassador Program, we've got to give it a whole bunch of codes, and you can have those codes. If you want, you can just enter. So it looks like you just have to type in exclamation mark ticket space one to buy one ticket. You're only allowed to buy one ticket. And it costs you a hundred Manus, which are my channel points. You don't want a Manu is. It's basically a water bomb in New Zealand in Maori. Oh no, I only got five out of 10 for that. But I soaked, wait for sarcasm. So yeah. Smash those, uh, yeah, that's the way, squiddies, that's it, that's how you do it. Can we Are buy tickets? We allowed to get yeah, of course you can, you can buy tickets. Get in there, everyone get in there. This buy is free. The this All is free. Tickets. Let's go. Okay, excellent. Doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> <laughs> I should say tickets purchased. Um, I was just vibing. <laughs> While it's vibing, Please, I will sing the song of my people. Come on, Dan. Dan's streaming. He's probably on Taco for Last of Us, I think. How dare he? How dare he? Doesn't he know we're saving oceans over here? I reckon. Okay, we'll worry about that later. We'll worry about that. We're in the middle of a combat. Oh, holy heck. We had a donation. Who's that from? Alcifer! Alcifer has donated. And. Oh, is that. Is that advantage? For me? Oh, yes, Alcifer! Yes! Oh. Yes! Oh, I ain't got it. I shall it. remember this next time you stream, Alcifer. <laughs> Are they from your community? <laughs> No, 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 I'm oh. a mod on their channel. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alcifer. Thank you so much. I shall use it now against the Solari. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Morada, it's your turn. You've uh, seen the I horrors that these creatures do. What are you doing? 
Um, I have a question. Is there, with the the pythons and the wall uh, that you have put, would you say enough of a ramp that if I were to do an unconventional spell, Watery Sphere, that I would be able to grab the commoners and move them up enough that they could get out of the pit if I threw them up in a ball of water? Okay. Water. Did you say watery sphere? Watery sphere. <laughs> um, let me just check that spell real quick. Um, I can, I can, I can read it to you if you want. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so you conjure up a sphere of water with a five foot radius as a point you can see within range. The sphere can ho- hover, but no more than ten feet off of the ground. This sphere remains for spell's duration. Any creature in the space must make a strength saving throw. Um, on a success, they're ejected, but on a failure, the creature is restrained by the sphere and is engulfed by the water. Um, so it can attempt to escape at the end of its turn. Um, the sphere can hold four medium creatures or one large one. Um, it restrains it restrains them, and then I can move the sphere up to 30 feet okay um, in a straight line so if it moves over a pit a cliff or another drop off it safely descends um but i'm trying to move it upwards sure um also at this like yeah so i'm 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 trying to move it but i can't make it fly i can make it hover about 10 feet and if i can pass it over the pythons enough to hover it up and out of the pit <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. I was actually trying to get as thin a line as possible. I'm I'm trying to pick okay. up the commoners and move them out of the way. Okay. So I I get it. I get it. I get it. I... It's a bit shenanigans-y, but it's the best they got in the situation. I have a backup plan if you say no. Yeah. Uh, I, I think... Also, everyone in my red circle currently has uh, plus four on saving throws. Oh. Okay. That's good to know. Uh, okay, so uh, I think when you cast it, uh, you, you cast it at a point. So um, you can't actually, you can't make it, ho- you can't make it rise up and down, can you? Uh, it, it says um, it, the sphere can hover. Yeah. So it's got a hover speed. Um, no more than, t- you, come in? you can see it at a point within range. So yeah, you could cast it at a point within range, 10 foot above the ground, but that wouldn't have the people in it. If it was ten foot above the ground, is that right? Um, I can't like, like uh, scoop them up. Uh, it's strange. Because I can, I can move it. Uh, you As know, it's action. okay. I'll go with my backup plan to make it easier on you. Don't worry. Yeah, I got a backup plan. I said, make them jump into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Swim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, I think uh, the way it reads is that you can cast it at like at 10 feet above the ground or if it falls down it it will hover 10 feet above the ground it doesn't say that it it would like it doesn't doesn't lift up it doesn't levitate to 10 foot off the ground i was i was trying it's okay nice try i like it (laughs) okay in that case instead i'm going to run to um oh i've got so many allies in the area i'm sorry I'm sorry, everybody. I have, shield, I have shield master, so if you need to it's, do something AOE, it's, avoid. It's I'm okay. okay. Um, I'm gonna scoop up. Oh, they're both within five feet. But you know what? It's it's okay. I am going to scoop up one of them. This one here. Um, I am going to cast thunderstep. <laughs> but I'm an admiration wizard, so as my react as a reaction. I am going to throw my arcane ward on the other commoner so they don't so the arcane ward absorbs the damage from the spell and doesn't kill them in the process. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love wizard shenanigans so much. Okay. Alright. Look, I gave I I want to save both of them. I can't take two. So okay. and I I thought there was only one left down here, so we're gonna we're gonna make it work. We're gonna make it work. Okay. So which one um, is it? So I'm gonna grab this one. 
and we are going to teleport. I can teleport up to 90 feet. I'm teleporting all the way to the door. Okay. Um, like, all, like, just just the whole way yep. um, to the door. Everybody within 10 feet, which I think is literally everyone in the pit. I'm sorry, friends. Um, has to make a constitution saving throw. Oof. Everyone they... gets plus four. <laughs> okay. Um, the commoner also has to make the constitution. I have <gasps> rolled a 17 for my damage. The commoner has to make a saving throw? Uh, yeah. What's your DC? Well, the, uh, the DC is 18. 18? 18. <laughs> it's okay though. It's only, if, if you succeed, you take half damage. If you fail, you take the full. But my arcade ward has 33 hit points. So as I'm vanishing, like, um, like I throw my hand out and like this purple, it literally looks like a shield, like block, like body blocks. Um, as like the thunder erupts and we'll take, we'll take the damage. I just need to know if it's full or half for my arcane shield. <laughs> okay, is your, uh, where is your arcane shield come on? Is that, is that, is that just on the whole time or what? Uh, it's a reaction. Um, it's a reaction. Part of an abjuration wizard, I have like this arcane shield that will take. Essentially, it's like ten hit points for me because I'm a high enough level. I can throw it at people and take right. damage. Right. Okay. So I cast Sweet. the spell, and my shield ra raises like a head of the rolling thunder yep. to to catch it. Oh, that's so cool! That's so um, cool. Uh, sleep on abjuration wizards. That's abjuration so wizards cool. are top tier. <laughs> that I is play sick. No other kind of wizard. <laughs> that is sick. Awesome. Uh, okay, so we're gonna roll, um, and it was a it's a plus four from the from your aura, isn't it? So yeah, so I rolled a twenty four. Okay, okay, so you, only take, you take half damage. No, I don't. I, oh no, I dropped my shield. No mind. Yes, half damage. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is for this is for the worker. Two for they fail. Okay, they take the full seventeen, but it's only seventeen. It's not. It's. It's not that bad. I swear commoners only have HP of 10. They did. Yeah, that's why I threw out the shield. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why there's a 33 shield, so they're perfectly fine. There's a reason oh. she's not a shield bearer yet. <laughs> okay. Oh, they're not dead. They're not dead. <laughs> they're not dead. <laughs> they're, they're not dead, and, you know, she's, try she's trying her best, but she can't teleport without hurting people, which is really bad for the job of defending yeah. people. So, <laughs> so, so what happens is that you do this teleport, boong, and like the dirt is just kicked up in the air. Uh, people are like thrown around, and this common as worker looks around and just like just sees you, just like reach a hand out, and the shield just like wraps around them, and all this force flies around them. They just saw their life flash before their eyes. Um, I should be within. Um, I was within 10 feet of both of the, the whistlers or no just the one on the left so they also need to make the save or take the damage uh, no, no where were you right in the, um, in the middle there the, right? the, the body was there oh okay I was I was here there so yeah I'm within 10 feet of both of them yeah you're within so, 10 feet so of they both they both also need to, to make the it's an 18 my save okay con saves first one Fails. Second one. They both fail. Okay, so they just they take seventeen thunder damage. Seventeen thunder damage. Holy shit. Okay. Ta-da. <laughs> I approve. Of nice. PPP. Nice. <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> I try. I'll make okay. it up to you. I swear. <laughs> Uh, okay, excellent. Good moves. Drax, you're up. Oomph, and these two are bamps. Um, yeah, so uh, from his viewing spot up on the staircase, uh, uh, the battle below, has um, has Drax noticed anything, uh, any of the damage that they've taken like from uh, Fazlari's uh, double-bladed scimitar or um, all the thunder damage, uh, that it's affected them very much? Was enough reaction? Um, uh, you know, you, all you can see is that from, uh, you notice from uh, Vesalari's uh, attacks is that um, they're very hard to hit because they're, they're blurred. Uh, but they 
um, they seem to take the that kind of thunder wave damage uh, full force. Okay. Cool. Um, okay, so Drax uh, is going to um, cast Dragonborn Flight and sprout spectral gem wings from his back. Oh, shit. And as he does, he um, equips his uh, Mace of Disruption and Magical Shield and just jumps off and flies down off the balcony of the uh of the staircase down into the pit <laughs> um instead of instead of landing um how, how tall are they they look like they're large creatures yep they're large yep so instead of landing i, I might fly above them and uh try and catch them in a cone of uh, for my breath weapon. Okay. On one of them? Uh, I'm going to try and catch them both. It's a 15 foot cone. So if I can fly to an angle where I can get both of them. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think you'd have to be carry because uh, Fessilari's in there. Um, And they are still 20 foot down. Yep, so I get a, a, a 30 foot flying speed with my wings. So oh, oh okay, so if you're aiming straight down, the end of your cone is what? Would it be wide enough to um, to sort of like catch them both, like aiming down? Like a, so it'd be like a circle. Well, let's go like maybe fly over here. Okay. And there's just what are you going to be flying still or landing? Uh, flying still. I okay. Think, I think. All right. You want to aim it in and, and do your breath weapon? Yep. Uh, cool. I think if you like angle it on the side enough, you won't catch Vesselari. Yeah, it'd be really bad if you hurt your teammates. <laughs> so bad. Who would do that? <laughs> Who would Only do a monster. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm going to use um, my channel divinity as well. Okay. Um, to uh, so destructive uh, destructive wrath allows me to use uh, a deal maximum damage, or instead of rolling for damage when I um, for lightning or thunder damage. So if I hit on this. Uh, then yeah, we max thunder damage. Oh yeah, shit. Okay, yeah, I, get, I remember that. So I'm pretty sure for the breath weapon, it's just a saving throw. Okay, what's the save? So hot. That's so hot right now. DC 16. Uh, Dick save. Dick save. Okay. Ooh. Okay, first one fails. Second one saves. What's the damage? Uh, so it was 30 thunder damage. Was, Oof. Uh, with the max. Yep. Yeah, so everyone just sees Drax just like uh, as a half, is it for the failed? Uh, for the save? Uh, oh. Oh, I can do three attacks. Yeah. Yeah, half <laughs> on a save, yeah. Okay. Can do three attacks. Yeah, you get two for action and one for bonus action. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Remember that for next time. Is that you done? Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, 
maybe just use the remainder of my flying speed to get closer to the group. Okay. What like down? Further down into the pit. Yep. So you're going to be flying, but further in the pit. That's right. Yep. Okay. Okie dokie. Nice. All right. Uh, Eva, it's your turn. Eva's just looking around at all of this and just suddenly just, oh, you're so bloody cool, all of you. I'm going to run. All right, it's getting a little cramped here. So my plan is I'm going to run up the wall and I'm going to follow the curve. As I do oh, so, I'm going to draw shit. my hand crossbows. One, two, into this one here, first of all. Which one? Which one, ping it? Uh, this one here. Oh, yeah, so yeah. I'm going to run along this wall and keep going. As I'm going, I want to go over, and I basically want to land here so that I'm a distraction, a different distraction for the two of them. Okay, cool. So, All right. Uh, yeah, going to make those attacks real quick. Don't forget you're hasted. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> uh, so... Um... 24 on both. So yeah, that, it's a disadvantage. So is that Ooh, two rolls? Okay, that's two rolls. So that's okay, so twenty-four of both then. Yep. Um, so one of them hits. One so hits. Yeah. Another two rolls. Real quick. Got that disadvantage. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Thank goodness. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Twenty. The twenty does hit. Yep, yep. So you both you hit twice. You avoided the crit. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, cool. <laughs> so that's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be 12 points of piercing on the first, 7 points of piercing on the second, and I am going to. Where is it? What's it called? What's it called? 12 on the thing. first. I have a thing. I've forgotten what it's called, but I can spend a key point to do extra damage. Uh, Flurry of Blows? Are kind of busted. No, 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 no. I get it as part of my Kensei thing, but I oh, okay. can't find it. And that's irritating. I am so sorry. Um, do, 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 do. Once per turn, when you hit a target with a Kensei weapon, you can spend a key point to deal an additional 1d8 extra damage. Okay, awesome. You can only do it the once. Okay. But that is... One with the blade. five points there. Okay, so this um, is all on the one creature? This is all on my... F yeah, this is all on the one creature for now. Okay. Um, as my action there. Okay. Um, or my first action, because I'm hasted. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah, you are! <laughs> So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and the, this is just flavor, apologies, um, but I have crossbow expert, so I ignore loading. So basically I Lara Croft reload using those two, uh, <laughs> the two metal things that I have on my hips. Oh yeah, pull yeah. Down, um, pull it back up, Love. realize, ooh, okay, that's fine, gonna just one on one side, one on the other, bam, bam, as my second action. Okay. Uh, which is going to be a disadvantage again. Yep. Level 14. Gotta love it. So the one that I already hit. Yep, 18 hits. Cool. And the new one, the one I haven't hit yet, <laughs> is going to be... 22 hits. Okay. So the one that I've already damaged takes 12. Fuck! This thing's getting the riddled. I, <laughs> the one that I haven't touched yet is going to take 9. Okay. Key point, Flurry of Blood. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah! Monk's, see, this is how you play a monk. I played a monk last night, didn't know what the hell I was doing. This is how you play a monk. 
so yeah bonus action i'm just gonna quickly like drop the crossbows you see they're on strings so they kind of just dangle when i drop them i just bam bam with the both elbows nice okay it's gonna be a disadvantage i'm sorry this is so many dice that's okay Uh, so the one i hit the first time 17. it's okay <laughs> oh, that's good. That's mm, that's a natural one on that one. So I assume yeah, that's a fail. Yeah, that's gonna be a fail. Okay. Um, okay, but the so, one that I've already riddled takes an extra eight. Eight. Jeez. Um, yes. Yeah, my battleship. I think. Okay. okay. That's all I can do. Crazy monk think... shit. Wait, no, never mind. What? Con save, please. Me? Yeah. <laughs> I hit with a my I hit with my fist, melee weapon attack technically, so stunning strike. Oh, because monk. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna use my advantage. Token. Go for it. <laughs> I've burned two key points, but it's fine. It's worth it. To pass that. Thank you, Alcifer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elsa. You, you got to be. Can uh, we? The, can the, we the DC evoke, is not very high. You got to be a sixteen. Can we evoke your disadvantage and just nullify your advantage? <laughs> uh, you, yeah, you can if you want. Okay, I think it's a group decision. I, if if you want to do it now, I'm happy to do it now. I'm fine. I, I don't really mind. I'm having fun just walking stuff. <laughs> Doctor. Oh yeah, I'm easy. <laughs> then yes, we'd like easy, to easy, your easy, nah, easy, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Disadvantage has been invoked. God so you damn just it! Normal. I'm going to use my last advantage to nullify that disadvantage. <laughs> oh, <it's... laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> Why not? Counted it. Counted it. <laughs> I've, I, yeah, all my tokens are gone um, now. I'm sorry, advantage and disadvantage don't stack in rules as written. <laughs> <laughs> rules as written. This is not rules as written. These are people buying I'm, I'm advantage. I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> I swear, Taylor, I swear. It's like the ultimate counter spell, counter this spell. I counter spell, you counter spell. This is what you bring me on, though. If you know I'm going to push the boat. <laughs> no, I love it. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, all the tokens have been used. God damn it, but not oh. stunned. Mm. No, you're good. You, yeah. You're safe. You're okay, safe. and it's uh, their turn. Yeah, that's it. That's everything I've got. Okay. Uh, that first whistler in front of you that you um, smote, Isolari, uh, reaches out with these blurry, long, taloned hands. And they're gonna like they swipe through the air, and just where you think it's gonna strike and you move, it's not there. It's it's coming from a different direction. So we're gonna make some attacks. It makes three attacks. Does twenty two hit you? That's a very good question. Uh, no, it doesn't because I would like to invoke a reaction, please, and cast shield. Okay. That's fine. So those claws go like they were meant to hit me, it comes from a different direction. And it just bounces off these. Okay. Uh, and does your shield last? Bubble. Does it does it last for the whole round? Oh, is it a reaction? How does it? Yeah, it's a, it's a reaction. And how long does it last for? It lasts for. Oh, Squid Kittens just donated again for an. I'm presuming it's disadvantage on me. <laughs> Come on! Cause. Thank you so much, Squid Kittens! Yay! Has <laughs> that changed shield? I thought it was... No, you know what? I don't cast shield. Why not? Why? It Why? does hit. Why? Because I think they've changed... I mean, it's been a while since I've played D&D. Like a year. Yeah. Uh, and before you used to be able to block melee attacks. Oh, no, 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 sorry. I'm, I'm, you can only see so much in this mask. I No, I do cast shield. Uh, you have a plus five bonus to AC. Yeah, yeah, and it uh, lasts one round. Yeah, so until the start of your next turn. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, so 
All right. Um, You're going to have to hit harder than 22. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so it does that, and it's like, and it looks confused. Uh, but then it turns its head and looks at the other person that's been putting arrows and shit in it. And with its back swipe, <laughs> it strikes out at Eva. Ballad. Eva. Ballad. <laughs> Um, was a 15 hit? Absolutely not. Okay. Does a 27 hit? That one does. <laughs> okay. Uh, does 13 psychic damage to you? Oof. Psychic. Yeah. And you feel like, you feel this kind of like cold, uh, chilling kind of like hand drift through your body uh and do psychic damage to you okay okay <laughs> uh the other one um looks at drax and fessilari uh and while its head's shaking it opens its maw and this otherworldly melody comes out um it doesn't make an actual physical sound, but you hear it in your mind. And I need you both to make uh, DC 16 wisdom saving throws. Oh, okay, you both save, yep. Uh, Okay. Um, and what? Hold on, I can do. And that one, you see the shimmer of like the glass again. Um, and where it and it be that what you're looking at becomes two dimensional. And it's in a flash, it's like a two-dimensional image, and then these glass shards twist, and it's gone. And it's up on the ledge above you, Drax, beside that worker. There's a worker on either right, side of it. Right. Oh. Uh, and... Did I get the deck of opportunity on it? No, it's a teleport. <laughs> Um, I think that one, that one will stay there. Okay, that's their turn. All right, round three for Solari. Okay. Wait, did that commoner get to try and climb out the pit? Oh yeah. <laughs> Did I get to move? Yeah. Did I get to flee? Uh, the one... Uh, that, that was beside Drax and that you shielded climbs out uh, but just as that that whistler appears right beside them oh no they can't even run they're gonna get attacked of opportunity oh no okay Mr. Larry, what are you doing okay uh, now is this an action or a bonus action it is a bonus action I disappear in a, in a field of mist. Oh, what? And I appear here. As I cast Misty Step. Oh! <gasps> the hell? Magic. Ah, uh, yeah. Magic. Because Misty Step is not just for getting away from things, it's also for getting close to things. <laughs> I love it, hate it. And I am going to wail on this thing as my action. Uh, so I'm going to do both of them, and I'm probably going to smite, but I'll do my smites afterwards. Okay. Uh, it's a disadvantage, and... First attack. Hits. Twice. Misses. Hold on, one, two, three, four, five. So the first attack was a 22 hit, second one was yep. a nine misses. 
Okay, cool. So uh, I smite the first one, yep. and I smite it with a level... Oh, what spell slots do I have? A fifth level spell slot, please. Oh my lord. Oh no. Oh no. And... Fifth level is... Oh, we got to play the scrolling game. Something D8. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of D8. Oh, there go. Divine Smite. Five D8. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's painful. Oh. You know uh, what? Meta magic that. We're re rerolling that one. <sighs> I'm going to spell a meta magic point and I use. Uh, one of my things that empowered spell oh no it's only spells oh no when you roll damage for a spell is divine smite a spell um i, I don't think <laughs> there it is, is a question is it? all right so then it takes 20 radiant damage 20 radiant damage okay that's pretty bad okay uh, I use my bonus action. That's all for my turn, thank you. Alright, epic. Murata? Hello! Yes, um... I am going to, um, uh, step forward. And... Murata is just gonna say, um, you're, yeah, she doesn't say anything. She's trying to think of something cool. She doesn't. She's panicking because those things are very close. I'm gonna cast Wall of Force. Um, oh, shit. I'm, I'm gonna make it do a U shape. Okay. Um, and I am going to just do that. <laughs> Oh, right, I see. Uh, I, I'm going to do that, um, and then I can choose if the wall of force appears in a creature's space, I can choose which way they are shunted. So I'm going to have them shunted away from the Whistler. Um, so now that thing is locked in there with Face Lari. Oh, nice. Okay, uh, cool. The wall of force extends to the ethereal plane as well, just in case that is relevant for its teleporting abilities. It oh. can't move through that way. Okay. It would have to go around but i'm putting like literally like um a series of like 10 by 10 like like violet panels like okay. that match the color of marada's eyes just like zoom, 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 like like fall down from the sky and like block them in to their <laughs> own like <laughs> tight space cool. arena okay so they can go and backwards but they can't go so nothing can physically pass through this barrier. Yeah, but it's a U, so they can go the way they so, can. So they can, so they can, they can jump down into the pit. All oh, right. Um, it's only ten foot high, so they can go over it if they can clear the ten feet. But essentially, what I'm doing is making a very tight ball pen as a way to shift those um, those commoners and give them the opportunity to run without being hurt because the whistler can't physically reach through to grab them. I love it. That's and perfect. just like yelling at them to like get out. Thank you, Tom, for the 2d6 for Drax. Oh my gosh, Drax is getting loaded up. Sweet. Stack the deck. No a fan. Thank you. Okay. All right. Cool. That's some cool shit. Right. Drax, it's your turn. Flying. So, yeah, you're probably uh, on the level with this Whistler. Or oh, it's just a little bit below face you, I guess. Face to face? Face to face. Um, I will... Uh, oh, with the one that's up on the ledge? Yeah. I see. Um... I'm 
He's behind. Oh, so the barrier is between it and the um and the and the worker, right? That's so right. And both the safe. workers, yeah, or the oh, workers. Cool. Well, I'm just, I'm just going to attack then. Okay. Um, Uh, at disadvantage? Yes, it's at disadvantage. Do you have flanking in your games? Nah. Dang it. Worth a shot. <laughs> well, I can always like throw try. loads more monsters than, than there are players, and then it just becomes flank, 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 flank. Um, I'm, I'm disadvantage? Use, um, that misses. Yeah, I'm going to use inspiration to, to gain advantage on that one, so that can cancel out. Okay. Inspiration. Oh yeah, DM inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go sure. for it. Yeah, hits. Oh, yep. you're welcome. Yes. And uh I'm going to uh use divine strike. Oh god. All this divineness. We are heavenly. So heavenly. We love to see it. Heavenly pain. Whoa. What's all those numbers? <laughs> what's the t what's the ten and the know. nine on the right? Is that the divine strike? What's it? Why has it got two numbers? I, I haven't done the divine strike yet. Oh yeah, it must be. Yeah, it must be with the divine strike. Ask D and D Beyond. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do I add them all up? Yeah, that seems a lot. Twenty-eight damage. Oh my lord. This thing's taken a beating. Then why isn't it dead? It is pretty <laughs> tough. It is pretty tough. I mean, it's looking beat up. It's looking pretty hurt. Oh, yeah. So it's not the 10. Uh, the 10 is the radiant damage if it's undead, uh, but the 9 is the divine smite. Oh, okay. I'll add 10 back on, shall I? Yeah. No, you don't have to. <laughs> so you can leave it there if you want. <laughs> it's done. It's done. Excellent. Do you have anything else? Flying dragon smiter? Uh, no. no. I don't think so. Okay, Eva, you're up. Okay. Roughly how big are these? Like, in terms of, like, animals? Am I talking, like, are they, like, an elephant size? Uh, like... no. Um, they're probably, like... Um, like a camel. Okay. It's cool. not far cool. off an elephant. Cool. 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 Like a cool. small cool. elephant. Taller. It's way easier. Way easier than trying to measure thing, things in like <laughs> foot. It's just what kind of animal yeah. you're working with here. They're like okay. eight foot tall. But they're okay. quite wiry. Cool. All right. Um, I'm gonna look at uh, <laughs> I'm gonna look at uh, Fasolari, who's just done this. I'm just gone. Oh, that's so cool! Why can't I? Do I mean, I can. Oof. I'm gonna bamf. There's like a little kind of black and grey dust. Oh. I'm gonna bamf just above it and dual pickaxes. Bam! Both of them. One, two. Shit. Um, so yeah, bonus action, blessing of the Raven Queen for the teleport. Yep. And then these two attacks, I assume, still at disadvantage. Yep. Uh, against the one that's right in front of me, I just want to keep this thing occupied. Yeah. Since my allies seem to have the other one covered, so. Okay. Uh, lowest is nineteen. Hits. Lowest is a 14. Misses. <clears throat> okay, so just the one. Vicious war pick. 14. Chipping away. That is a 7. Gonna burn a key point for death strength. Which is gonna be another 4. Okay. And then as I land onto the ground, I am still hasted, I assume? Is Wall of, uh, wall of Force concentration? No, that is just something that I can... That Sweet. I can you can All do right, two more two more attacks then. Oh bam bam. Gosh. Just into the side of its legs. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna really upset this thing. Okay. Uh right. 
<clears throat> Whoops, sorry. Just... It's alright. <laughs> Lowest is a 17. Hits, yep. Lowest is a 16. Hits. Beautiful. Mm. Oh, that was less beautiful. Six damage on the first hit. Okay. Seven damage on the second. Gonna burn a key point on both attacks for stunning strike. Okay, so six and seven. That's a 13. Going through key points like it's candy, but it's fine. It's worth it. Okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, what's the DC? DC 16. On Con, yeah. Ooh. Fails. On the first? On the second? first, on the first, so you can save a key point. Sweet. Yeah. Stunned. Monks. Ooh. Monks! Monk shit! Okay. Crazy. I'm just gonna kinda look at it as I uh, put the axes back down and prepare to draw a different weapon. Oh I no. just look at it and I'm like... Oh no. <laughs> oh and, no. Uh, that's that's everything I got. Okay. How long is it stunned for? Uh, it is stunned for the end of my next turn. Oh my lord. That's bad. That's bad news. Okay. Has it stopped phasing? Um... Has it stunned? Blurred form. Uh, attack rolls against the Whistler are made with disadvantage unless the Whistler is incapacitated. <laughs> oh. Excellent. Oh. It's yeah. all over now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you can see it. It's It stops blurring. It's just lay there, this hideous, grey, uh, long, bipedal creature. Okay. Uh, the other one attacks Fessilari with its swipe. So you don't have the shield's gone now, isn't it? Is that right? Uh, I cast it on um, its turn last time, but it doesn't end until my turn, and my turn's coming up. So it's up to you, DM. I will let you raise. Oh. If you knock my mask off, then yeah, that's I what I was aiming for. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, then I'll totally allow I'm aiming, it. I'm aiming for the mask. <laughs> yeah, please aim for the mask. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Code word for it's getting really hot in here, please. No, my eyes are watering under here, and I'm quite sure my lashes have fallen off. Oh no. We'll find oh, no. out. First one is a, no, it's only a 10. Thing is, you can't knock my mask off. 23? Does a 23 hit? It certainly does. Yeah, it does 16 damage, and as it claws across your face, and your mask comes flying off. And it's third attack. Gets three. Does a 20 hit you? Yes, it does. It does another 17, so that's a total of. Sorry, 20... my earphone also fell off. What was that? A total of 33 psychic damage. Face reveal! Face reveal! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and that sh um, uh, and it is going to bonus action down to its friend Womp and oh hi there kind of forgot about you stand over its body like crouch and just look at you like shimmering looking at you Eva Womp um, and it's got like, after it's swiped and done the psychic damage, you can just see wisps of like psychic matter dripping from its claws. Uh, that's its turn. Fissilari, it's your turn. Magnetic lashes on a metal mask does not work very well. <laughs> okay. Oh, my face is so cold now. Um, <laughs> right, let's, let's, uh, okay. Right, okay, one is dead. One is incapacitated. The yeah, other one, one is stood above it. Oh. Okay, okay. 
They start. Okay. So it is five foot movement to get to the edge of the ledge, I imagine. Oh, oh yeah, um, I'm going to move these commoners out as well. Oh, sweet. Thank goodness. They're saved. Uh, this one is stuck between a force wall and a fire. Ugh. 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 I'm sorry. Ugh. Ah, I can't get out. <laughs> I can't get out. <laughs> just, just full on sprinting for the door and all of a sudden just dunk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's a rough space to be in. I'll grab, I'll grab him in a second. So yeah, it's just gonna cower in the corner, uh, away from the fire, and and tucked up against the force wall. They're safe there. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's fine. It's fine. They are freaking out. Cool. So it's five feet to the ledge. Yep. Can I run and jump again? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Where can I land? Uh, you can land anywhere in the middle of the. Yeah, okay, I want to be here. I want to be here. Yep. I would Sweet. say, me... uh, oh yeah, make Roll. it, yeah, just a athletics check, just to see if it goes hideously wrong. That's fine. Excellent. <laughs> Kaboom! Not getting away. <laughs> no, they are not. And I've left my mask on the floor. And no, like there have been rumors on the Radiant Citadel that I don't even have a face. But my face, I have a face. There is a face there. There's a face and I there. Just com- yeah, and I just completely beam blue light, the same matching as the eyes on my wings. Cool. That's sick. And we're going to attack the one that is incapacitated. Oh, okay, okay, yep. Because it is not phasing. Yep, not phasing. And... Yep, so we're, going, so we're going to attack, extra attack, and then revenant sword attack so okay. that's three attacks yep. take, adva- take, yep. take advantage of that advantage <laughs> yep you've got advantage on all those 21 22 whoa 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 how many attacks are going on here I can do three yep so the first one advantage is 23 uh the second one 50 15 hits fuck's sake um and the no oh no i'm looking at the wrong ones uh, 21 hits, 22, 22 hits, and a 17 hits. I don't know what the 19 at the bottom was. So they all Extras. hit. They all Extras. hit. Excellent. Oh my gosh. And then smite them all. Okay. Yeah. So 20, 29. And we're going to smite it at level 4, so... I can get these all back, it's fine. Uh, Divine Smite. Uh, 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 one minute, we've got to type it out. I'm not doing the roll 20 dice. Uh, forward slash roll. Uh, oh, sorry, there was a there was an advantage for Dr. Reprieve from Yay, Asteria Thank Oracles. you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank so you, Leonor. Uh, Divine Smite, 2d8, plus each level uh, higher the oh, so it's 4d8 times 3. Well, 4d8, control A, control V. Oh, wait, I did it wrong. Ah, I've got to type it again. Oh. Twenty-nine. We've rolled forty-eight. We've rolled forty-eight once. Or how many are we doing? I, I smited all three. Okay. Attacks. Oh my gosh. It it's beautiful. Oh. Really super fast, like a windmill. Uh, Jesus, that last one. Twenty-six on that last one. Okay, twenty-six. Thirty. Forty-three. 57. Describe to me how you slay this creature. So I take my revenant blade in hand, I leap into the pit, I twirl it in my arms as I hold it in two hands and just literally 
swing side to side once twice three times my blade glowing as brightly as my eyes i seem to exude light and this thing just dissipates like it's been shattered like glass tiny little whispers of glitter land on the floor like it'd been burnt awesome awesome um its companion sort of opens its mouth and you hear this kind of like scream inside your head let's scream back nice (laughs) okay one is destroyed finally okay Murata. okay uh inspired truly by Faislari's uh act um Marada scampers over to the edge and I believe I've got a clear shot I do um she wants to get this fight over with she realizes that she's she's messed up she's not done done the best and hey she's not a shield bearer yet I cast a lightning bolt at seventh level, um, and I would also like to add on my additional two d six from River and Maddie, so I will be mm. rolling. <laughs> Hang on, the base is eight d six plus an additional four d six for higher level casting, plus another two, so that's fourteen d six. Okay, I hold believe on. if I'm doing my math right. <laughs> okay, what, what's the dick save? Uh, it is. Um, Deck save 18. 18. So yeah, it's an additional... Crit, baby! 23. Uh, dang it. I'm going to roll them anyway. Wait. I might end this. Oh, uh, as, a, as a generous DM, there is a disadvantage token on me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Squiddy's in there shouting, Disadvantage! <laughs> 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 and Leonor. <Leonardo. laughs> also, fuck you now. All right, chat. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was so bad. Oh, <laughs> that no. damage roll. Look at all the ones. Dude, dude. Look at all that. that I was think six over half ones. of them are one. Oh, that's so oh. upsetting. I'm really upset. Oh, okay. Got rid of my dis- disadvantage. I'm happy. Still 34 damage, though. 34 damage. 34 for 14 d6 34 damage is pitiful <laughs> is there any way i can trade in both my advantage and my dmi inspiration to roll that again um uh okay hold on that's so sad <laughs> uh, that's pretty br- that's pretty brutal that's, that, that's... that hurts my that hurts my little kid <laughs> uh, so you can trade in your advantage i'll let you roll again <gasps> thank you <laughs> i trade it in i love charity games 54 <laughs> 54 that's so yeah, that's much better Jeez. thank you that's all right oh, my... DM. <laughs> <laughs> so this this lightning bolt that comes out is thick and powerful and this is like and bits of smaller lightning that are arcing off it all around and it strikes through it and it is blackened from like the the burning you can smell this horrid horrid flesh just like withering under the spell um but it's just about standing still just about it's got a hole like ripped through the side of it from your lightning bolt it's got holes it's, it's bleeding so much it's it's come on doc you could do this drax got this uh cool um so i'm gonna use i have the charger feet can i use that it, it doesn't specify walking. Um, I'd like to use a, a, the dash action to fly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and charge. Yeah. And to charge at this thing. I, I, I think that's like a like a, a, a common dragon tactic is just to fly and squash things, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, as he's uh, flies straight down uh, towards uh, this whistler, he's going to be like loading up a swing of his mace. Okay. 
Uh, and so that'll give me a plus five bonus to damage if I hit. All right. It's still disadvantage for you, though, I think, isn't it? Oh, is it? Okay. Um, it's, this one's moving around still, like, it's still blurry. Damn it. 13's going to miss. 13's going to miss. Okay. Yep. Um, but you're right there now. I don't have... Uh, uh, uh. Oh, yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, you're done. A bonus action was used. Oh, was that the dash? Uh, no, that's the uh, attack. You can use a, to attack on the charge. Right. That's your bonus action. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess they're nice to have an action. Um, yeah. So my action will be an attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. If it says, if you've dashed, you can take, as a bonus action, take an attack. Then you still, yeah, you still yeah. have your attack. All right, cool. Well, we'll give it another go, but again, at disadvantage. Yep. That did not come through. Oh no. D&D Beyond is breaking. One more little roll. Yeah, 16 hits. Come on. Get him. Get him. Oh yeah, Papyrus, he remembered advantage in 2d6 tokens. Uh, so, 18. Uh, what's the 12? Uh, that's if it's on dead. That's oh, okay. That's disruption. 18. Oh, it's... If you want to use your 2d6, you would finish it, probably. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, yeah. roll 2d6. Aw, oh, yeah. It's not double ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what was it? Snake, eyes. Bad as snake <laughs> eyes. Give me snake eyes. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. I burned 2d6 <laughs> Okay. And tell me how you how you destroy this creature. Makes a disruption. Yeah. So he uh, he soars down um, and like gains some bit of speed uh, as he flies down towards this, this thing. Um, about misses <laughs> on the on the initial strike <laughs> and then kind of just like backhands it up um yeah it just like catches the catches its jaw uh with the mace of disruption okay nice crack uh and it shatters uh and it form dissipates as well much like the other ones and as you destroy the second one, um, this kind of weird shimmering stops in the air around you. That kind of like discordant melody also stops. But this mill is collapsing. A huge beam just comes crashing down um, and, and lands right beside you both, like right in the middle between the all three of you. Uh, roof, big chunks of burning thatch are just falling down. The peasants, uh, the peasants, the, the workers are screaming. This one can't get out. That force of wall is... That, that I force, drop it. Drop it. I'll, I'll use my next action to drop it. Okay. Right. And they, they everyone abandons the mill. Um. So to pick up my shield and my mask on my way out. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I'd like and... to pick up an unconscious worker on my way out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, what well, the ones that got bit? Yeah. Oh no, that they didn't make it. I'm sorry. Oh, revivify. You revivify? <gasps> oh yeah. All right. Which one? Yeah, I burned two spell slots for both of them. Which one? Uh, I'll, I'll use both spell slots to, to get both of them up. Oh my gosh. Do you have the components for that? 
I mean, I came prepared. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. If 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 you're doing that, then I'm going to do some damage control to make sure that this thing does not collapse on you. Yeah. Um, wherever there are huge amounts of fire, I can only do this once, but I can cast I can cast it for a minute. I am going to breathe in deep and use the the one weird magical item I have, ventilating lungs, to cast gust of wind and attempt to put out the fires that are across here i'm just gonna keep going for as long as i can to okay buy by uh <clears throat> drax as much time as i can okay um so is that um is that a spell uh it's it's technically a spell yeah so uh a line of strong wind 60 foot long and 10 foot wide blasts from you in a direction you choose technically because it's the item it would be coming from my mouth right um, okay uh that's creatures blah 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 the gust disperses gas and vapor it extinguishes candles torches and unprotected flames in the area um so i'm literally just gonna like scatter blast this line um okay i can concentrate for up to a minute i know it's not going to get rid of all of it but i can at least buy time okay um what if it's like a like a raging inferno does it put that out or does it fan the flames uh, it just says it just says it extinguishes candles torches and unprotected flames in the area unprotected flames i guess these are unprotected flames yeah Okay, you're doing that. Um, and basically, yeah, anything that's like these logs and clumps of thatch are landing all around you, and you're basically putting those out as they fall all around, while Drax, Dr. Drax is there, uh, casting your magic. What, is, uh, <laughs> what does what does your river vivai look like? Can you explain how that manifests? Because that sounds pretty special. Uh, yeah, so so it takes uh, it takes an action uh, to cast, and um, it's uh, probably like one of the more um, special abilities that he's uh, he's learned uh, to be able to bring people back from the from the dead is, is like his whole yeah goal, right um, in life. Um, so his powers are granted to him by Akadi, um, and uh, I guess it's kind of like a, a Final Fantasy summon almost, like where. Uh, radiant light uh comes down as he's uh, above the the patient um and like these uh like feathers start to fall around um <laughs> as a, as the glow uh the seeps into their body wow nice Phoenix down excellent uh yeah and uh in this horrific kind of area smoke flames um these two workers uh breathe once again, <gasps> their wounds knitting together, um, their chests rise and fall as they take in air, uh, and you uh, you save them. Well done. Uh, and you all flee just as the mill collapses, as Dr. Eva runs out of breath and the flame quickly engulfs the area. You all jump out. Just and behind you, crash! The thing just continues to burn. As you uh, you make your way, you save the people and escape the burning mill with your lives. I'll take you back to the village thing outside here. That's completely on fire. And uh, something else strange happens. But we're going to take a break. We've been going for that combat was very long. Uh, those creatures had ridiculous amounts of hit points, uh, and I sh I didn't know how quickly you would get through them. I was expecting them to die a lot faster, uh, but <laughs> but disadvantage. Trying to pace myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't decided that that was, was it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> We tried, man. <laughs> yeah, you did great. I'm not saying you didn't do great. That was amazing. There was some some cool stuff going on there. Um, but if anyone wants to, I'm going to draw that giveaway. Um, if anyone wants to win uh, the Roll20 code for Radi uh, Journey Through the Radiant Citadel, just drop. Um, it's not working, so just put it. But I'll write names down. So but if you put in ticket 
one in there like that and then i will know um i've already got a bunch of names we're gonna go for a break i'll probably draw while we're on break uh and then let you all know so no, go away come back we'll come back soon thanks grab bye 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 be right back
everybody thanks for hanging around waiting for us we're back and wait where's ray i think ray chasing is chasing cats are they still chasing cats months. oh no. yeah. I think it's months now oh. <laughs> i expect you to be a bit of horse dad oh ah, chat that was the that was that was the old that was the old horse dad. I was much better by the end of that Red Dead Redemption horse arc. <laughs> no horses were killed after that. Anyway, uh, we're going to carry on with the game. Oh, don't play it again. Dan, you're meant to be my mod, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you, Kawaifu. I really appreciate it. So, um, it was, uh, I think Papaya had got a disadvantage for me. Um, and Yay. and I got a D6. I got an advantage. Thank you very much. Uh, you got an advantage. You got an advantage. Um, I needed to take the advantage off Taylor. Because yep. that was gone. Thanks. Meant it. Thank you. Alright. Ain't nobody tell me horsies. Oh, I that was I love that stream. I love the Red Dead Redemption stream. It was so good. Sound of lits are awesome. Um we, I don't want to get too far into what's happening next without Ray being here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give away that code for Journeys to the Radiant Citadel on Roll 20. Last chance. <laughs> trolling ev is in the job description god oh, god damn it uh last chance if you want if you want to be in with a chance to win that code the roll 20 code for journeys through the radiant radiant citadel type in exclamation mark ticket space one you can hear me you made me look fuck's sake they made me you can hear me. everyone can hear me right yeah yes yeah chat trolling me again <laughs> God damn! Thank you for the subscription, but also winding me up. Okay, here we go. I'm going to. I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll. Here we go. Oh no! No! We have a winner, Outlawed Games. Outlawed underscore games. <laughs> oh, yeah. I call, shen I call, sh I call shenanigans. <laughs> hey, uh, is this nepotism? <laughs> this feels very nepotism and e. <laughs> uh, roll it again. Roll it again. No, 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 no. I'm going to put it in Discord. Yeah, roll it again. Go on, go on. Roll no, it no, again. no. It's, it's absolutely fair. It's absolutely fair. I'm going to put it in the Discord so you can see. Um, the, the no, role. I believe you. I'm just, I'm just, just ragging on you. Yeah, we're just ragging on you. Bants, it's bants. There it is. <laughs> it's in, a, it's in my Discord. Oh yeah, no, no. nice. That's, that's that's legit. That's, that's legit. legit. That's that legit. is for keeping your mask on for yeah. all these hours. That's and for the, sweating that's for it. committing, committing to the character. We Rather, respect the commitment. Hundred percent, yes. All right, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna gift that to one of the viewers then because just because. <laughs> don't don't lump lump us all in with these rap scallions, <laughs> rigged. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, welcome back, Ray. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Are you okay, buddy? 
That was the wildest 20 minutes of my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we had someone else's cat running around, then I got accosted by moths, and I heard the cat meowing. There's <laughs> uh, still one in the corner of the room, but it's, it's, it's sleeping, so it's fine. Moth, not cat. I don't just keep cats in corners. Uh, I'm just... Oh, this Doesn't it suck when you're not a monk in real life? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, oh, thank you, Papaya, for the gifted sub to Call Waifu as well. Very generous. So we will continue with our adventures. You escaped the burning mill and it collapses and it's an inferno the workers are trying to put it out they are running around the ones that are able to doubt like buckets of sand and dirt to put out smother the fire uh and they seem to be doing an okay job um but as this happens as this is happening there is one of those weird shimmers again slightly different from the from the one you saw inside but not too dissimilar. And you hear a tearing sound. And that silvery ripple appears. Broken light planes. Um, but what you see is like a gap in the, in the sky above you. Not too far from, from in amongst the smoke as it's blowing over. Uh, and from the anomaly, a frantic looking bright scarlet macaw comes flying out, whoosh, leaving trailing silvery motes behind it as it spreads its wings and comes flying out of this tear in reality. A figure appears behind the bird and tries to is also trying to push through this anomaly, trying to pass, but can't, can't fit through, can't squeeze through. Uh, but you see space trying to, fingers trying to bend and climb out. Is anyone there? A woman in a beaded vest shouts. I, I can see you. I, I can't get through. And I'll show you a picture. Uh, she looks a bit more panicked than this pose that she's in now. Um, can I, how, how far away from us is this, um, anomaly? Um, how far about, would she be? It's about, um, probably about 30 feet away, but in, in, in the air. Mm -hmm. This, and this kind of like macaw. The one that you see on her shoulder there has flown out. Okay, okay. Hang on, I'm just checking because I think. Um... Uh, would would I recognize her as like, or at least recognize maybe what she's wearing as as uh yeah a local of Atagua. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely, uh, she's definitely a local, um, from, from the clothing, um, the eye makeup, uh, the weapon, and just, uh, just her general look, uh, but what, um, I'll, I'll get you, whoever wants to, can make an intelligence arcana check. I'd like to cast detect magic. Sure. Okay. Um, to kind of assist me in an arcana check. Okay, yep, yep. I'll give you advantage on that check then. Anyone else can roll uh, that as well if they want. I shall leave the magic to the magic people. <laughs> that is fair. That is fair. I shall leave the intelligence to the intelligence. <laughs> also <laughs> fair. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's all about so bad. Um, I'm gonna use the DM inspiration to re-roll one of one of those. Okay. 
because I got like a, a four or a, or a one. What's it? Oh. Is that 20? Yes, okay. Um, I know exactly what's going on. Please tell me everything. Thank you. <laughs> tell you all. Okay, so uh, what you see, um, you were looking, uh, it appears to be, you recognize it as a planar rift. Ooh. So it's a temporary uh, and potentially dangerous portal created by multi-planar energies, and it's not deliberate magic. It's a rift. It's unstable. Um, and while the Macaw was able to fly out, um, this woman, um, it's already fading. It's already closing. Um, and preventing further travel through it. Um, and you could see that the woman is struggling and she was like, ah, ah, listen, 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 please, please. I am Yarana. And the ghost orchid Dupui is under siege by alien creatures. Chumagua, the, our guardian, has fallen into a deathly slumber. If the great spirit dies, all is lost. If you brave souls, seek the Tapui. Find the portal of the Janos. Nene knows the way. But, but be... And it seals up. And like shattering glass, the rift collapses and is gone. This parrot, this macaw, circles around and tries to go back where the, the, the rift was, but it's no longer there. And it flies back, squawks frantically a few times, um, and then just floats around. All right, so a lot has happened in the last, like, 10 minutes. Um... Magic people, what's going on? You, you, you know, right? Surely you know. That was a that was a rift, a very unstable rift. Um, there's a problem here. There's there's definitely I'd, other I'd, planes, I'd other planes. We're, we're against. We're, we're a little bit past a, a, a bit of a problem. I'd, I'd say this is a disaster at this point. But um, thank you. That's that's appreciated. And um, oh, uh, Ferasat, do you need a moment to, to fix the, the, the mask? <laughs> I don't know whether I, I I don't know what the the, the customs are. So um, <clears throat> look in. Uh, Faze Lari just looks at you and she just does this thing where she just speaks celestial when she just doesn't want to partake in a conversation and so she just looks at you and then just goes <laughs> DM, I'm planar trapped in a different body mm -hmm. what do i know i obviously know that other planes exist yeah what would i know about such apocalyptic shattering planar events um okay make me either a, a history or arcana check <laughs> i love how i love how they just like planar snobbed over <laughs> just celestial snobbed equal parts fascinated and horrified <laughs> <laughs> just receives that it's just like yeah okay, um, I, I, D, I'm, how's it going i am going to now use um use my advantage i'm gonna do a history check what do i know as a first shard of saloon um, I'm good. One minute. Rolling. Advantage. 
whatever one's higher. Okay, 15. Okay. Um, you would know, um, and also, um, I would say Drax would know, because you've heard, you heard some words in that conversation, uh, and those I words... I Chamagua. Yep, you heard Chamagua, you heard, uh, Ghost Orchid Tapui, um, and Eva, uh, as a historian, you're, um, is that right? You're, uh... I believe you're a, um, what's your background, Eva? I am a time traveler. <laughs> I'm not sure if Ray heard me. <laughs> no, I didn't. Hi, hello. <laughs> uh, what's your background? I'm sorry, I'm sorting out an audio issue. Um, archaeologist. <laughs> Archaeologist, <laughs> yeah. So you would have, uh, you'd pick up on some stuff as well. That um, ghost orchid to Pui is um, a very closely related um, part of the Feywild. It's it's got a very strong connection with a Tagwa, but is definitely in the plane of the Feywild. Okay. I'll and, communicate and, that back. And what I would know from about apocalyptic events? Um, apocalyptic events. Um, you would know that um, um, with a fifteen, I think that there's been um a struggle with in the past the connection between the Feywild and the Targwa um, with otherworldly beings um, similar to the ones that you just encountered. In fact, that kind of like triggers like a memory that there was in the past, there was an event that involved these otherworldly beings um, it was presumed just rumor and lost to history, but the fact that you just fought them brings it to the forefront of your mind, and you and you remember those are no rumors. This is this is kind of some real stuff going on. You're not entirely sure what plane they came from, though. Pretty sure it wasn't the Feywild. So there's yeah, definitely so multi-planar shenanigans going on here. The, the things this child spoke of, I didn't get an age, they, should, they just look young. Um, Not a child, probably like uh, um, mid-twenties, late-twenties. The things this person speaks of, uh, the, the names and places uh, from stories of uh, that I have heard as a hatchling. Uh, the, uh, the orchid temple. Uh, Tipui and Chamagua, this is a uh, fairy tales. Yeah, so you would know that a Chamagua, um, this guardian, uh, was believed to grant uh, visions, beautiful visions, and um, bestow lovely dreams upon. upon uh, the natives of Ataqua. It is disturbing to hear that the the problems Ataqua is facing uh, now appear to be connected to nightmares. Something is very wrong with the connection with the Fey realm here. Yeah, the fact that your uh, Yorana um, said that uh, Chamagua had fallen into a deathly slumber, um, and that is why there is no more of these good visions and dreams, but there is a lot of nightmares, which makes ties in with the rumors that you had heard. I, I think we should follow this. Sorry. 
Uh, I think we should follow her parrot. <laughs> Can I coax the parrot down? Yeah, as you uh, beckon, uh, Nene, who at a start would have recoiled at that noise you made, um, has been just flying, flying around, circling. But as you reach up and beckon, it flutters down and lands on your shoulder. And it looks at you, like kind of leans out and kind of looks back at you. And you can see there's definitely like there's an intelligence in its eyes. I like, I give it scratches on my shoulder, but also my wings on my head, just kind of like caress it. <laughs> You are like me, displaced from your time. And it kind of like pulls back just a little bit when you speak. And then it goes, yes. Ah, uh, same. Not from here. Must go back. Face Larry looks to the rest of the party and he's like, Talking bird? <laughs> I mean, angel creature, but also. Talking bird? <laughs> hey, well, that's fascinating. Um, however, that doesn't come out of her mouth. What comes out of her mouth is... I'm starting to think that my being here isn't an accident. More, a bit of it. more scratch, more scratchy, more, more, more. I think we need to follow the bird. And as you're doing this, um, you can see that the workers, uh, they, they haven't been able to prevent the fire um, from completely taking over. They've they managed to, to stop the spread of the flames going through the rest of the village buildings and the storerooms or spreading out into the sugarcane fields themselves. Um, and as they, they're working, you can hear whispers, uh, whispers um, from these people. And they were like, did you see the creatures? Did you, they were, they were whistlers. They, they sounded like the fables. They were sounded like the ones from, from the, the, the fairy stories, the, the tales. Uh, and they're going, people are like fearful. Um, And before you can engage with him, um, a man arrives uh, and he's quite well dressed, sort of um, not like a worker, um, but he's tall, dark skinned, and he wears very well made clothes, beaded robe, um, carries, carries like a, a, a cane and uh, he, he approaches his workers first uh, and makes sure that everything's under control. Oh, what was that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm making, I'm making angel noises. That's it. Uh, and this, this person is surrounded by a few bodyguards. Um, and he comes over. Um, to the workers, and they, they're all describing what happened here and everything. Uh, and he, you can see he's astonished to hear about the sinkhole, and um, he comes over to you and is like, Greetings. Uh, I am Alphonse Rubenez Zumdi. Uh, this is, these are mine, 
my buildings. This is my business. Uh, here I owe you gratitude for saving these people. Whom, who might you be? I look in deference to Dr. Drax. <laughs> Uh, greetings, greetings, Alphonse. Uh, we we come uh, from the Radiant Citadel. We've heard troubles uh, from Atagua, uh, and uh, it turns out we arrived just in time. Yes, it would seem that you arrived perfectly in time. In fact, such a coincidence. Um, I cannot s state that enough. I am very, very grateful for your appearance here. Um, can you tell me what you saw here? Because, uh, these people have said that they were, they were whistlers here. <laughs> I cannot believe this. This is fairy tales. What uh, fairy tales? Definitely real. Yeah, fairy tales state, uh, about the whistlers, they were... They come from the shadows, and they take away the unwary. They always, with some horrifying tune, whistling in the wind. Ah, uh, you mean like this? And I would like to try and replicate the like the tune. Well, I don't know because no one has ever heard, seen one. Uh, so you could. Uh, that could That's be the definitely what it sounded like to me. Oh, okay, okay, sure. Uh, okay, um, and then uh, some other my people said that there was a woman in the sky. What is this? I can say what it name was. Your Honor, what's her name? Oh. Would you mind if we have a conversation privately over here? Um, and he says to his bodyguards, uh, please uh, help. Not to help the people control the situation here. Uh, make sure that the wound would attend to. Um, but I need to speak to these people. Please, I would like to speak to you privately if that is possible. Uh, yes, if you know anything, we we need to know as much as we can. I believe I can share some knowledge with you, and, and likewise you with me, if that is okay. I'd like to do an insight check on this person. Okay, sure thing. Like, do they... I want to know if they believe, like, what we're saying, that, like, the whistlers... Um, like in everything, whether they're on, whether they're on the level or they, or they're like trying mm -hmm. to screw over their workers. Yeah, go on then. Give me an inside check. Oh, that's a natural one for a total of two. <laughs> <laughs> everything he is saying seems to be a-okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, just out of, out of interest, Alphonse, uh, have the workers said how the fire started? Uh, yes, they, there was, um, some strange magical energy in the air, and then a, a hole appeared inside the mill, but the hole was right under where, where the fires and the kettles, where we are making the liquid sugar cane. Uh, and it just spilled everywhere. And that set the place on fire. <laughs> uh, and he beckons you over to a storeroom that's a little bit out of earshot. Uh, and he's very intrigued about... He asks you questions about the, 
about this the woman this y Yarana and what she said. Please, so can you tell me what she said? She mentioned the ghost orchid to Pui. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. And that uh, Chamagua is uh, in a slumber. Oh, yes, that would explain so much why uh, the disturbances, the unnatural feelings across Atagua. Oh, um, okay. Oh, so, uh, legends say that that these are mythical plants called the ghost orchid, orchids, which grow on the tapui. Now, and the ghost orchid tapui is not of our realm. It is in the fair world. The white seed of the pod of the ghost orchid is said to have the power to bring back the dead. So we need to go to the Feywild and get those seeds? I would Sounds very like much you... like for you to retrieve one of these seeds for me. For the which I can pay you handsomely. That's what I was worried about. It kind of <laughs> sounds bad. Yes, sounds like uh, you're trying to... Um... <clears throat> Sounds like we're going somewhere to go and fetch something to go and revive a god or a protective spirit deity thing. I don't, that's not my area of expertise. But then, um, sounds dangerous and complicated and exciting. <sighs> it is not to revive a god. It not. My, my motives in this are a personal, yes, but they, they are not as ambitious as reviving gods or taking over worlds or whatever you, you seem to have. I, I own a sugar plantation. I have lost someone. Do I believe that? <laughs> uh, he seems sincere. You can roll inside if you want. So he doesn't want the he doesn't want the seed for us to go and save um hmm. whoever sorry, let me double check the name. Yorana Yorana has said has fall yeah, so he doesn't want us to go save whoever Yorana has said has fallen. He wants us to bring him a seed for him yeah. to use. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, That's not right. for Chamagua. <laughs> not for Chamagua. For yeah, like, his own personal use. <laughs> for his own personal use. Pretty much. Ava, Ava's like, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Deathly slumber. All right, cool. Let's go and collect this magical item to go and rev No? Not the okay. not the day not not the guardian. We're, we're gonna oh okay, sure. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I totally pick up on the vibe that Ava's got there and she's like we're actually here to to help the people of Otagua with the thing, with the problems that uh, they're having at yeah, the moment. Yeah, uh, now to... we're being sent that way. <laughs> oh no, this is good. This is this this is this works. This is perfect for both of us. Uh, I know the location uh, of the the portal to um, well the legend of where it is um and uh you can see uh the the macaw uh, uh nene is kind of like uh flapping it and um it's like ah uh, who the boy the boy and uh uh is kind of like excited and yarana yarana the boy I think this is what we've got to do, team. She did say that the parrot knew the way. 
sounds like quite the adventure we've managed to stumble onto, on top of the adventure that we were already stumbling into. This is it. This is this is the adventure, right? Something is wrong. We're gonna stop the nightmares. We're gonna stop the whistles, and we're gonna go. I've only ever been to two planes. The, the the ethereal plane where the citadel is and the material plane. So adding a third to my list is like pretty big. It's it's good work experience. It'll look it's good great on your working. CV. Yeah, like I but did you did you see? Except for that last bit, nobody technically saw that last bit. But in the mill, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't fire off a single almost shot. Killed a, almost killed a worker. Yeah. yeah no. Totally no. Almost saw that. No. No. No, I, 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 you agreed that you would, you would do, you would like write me a reference, and like you can't include the bad bits, otherwise the shoot bearers aren't gonna take me. All right, you get one. You can have one gimme of, uh, you know. <laughs> I did my best. I did my best. That's a... You did like some Thank you, Face Larry. I always appreciate your support. <laughs> uh, and uh, Nene is. Um... Uh, starts just playing up a bit. I was like, "A fun wants sugar orchid pod, <laughs> orchid pod," and you look around. I was like, <sighs> "Boring, boring, boring." Agreed. What's we doing? Following the bird. Tapui! Tapui! Yeah, these these events are all connected, so we should make haste to Tapui. Uh um and Alfonso's like Yeah, um that is quite the trick away. Um that is and the only information I have is like a general area where the portal or entrance is um because the tapui in fact oh, is meant to be the legends say in the feywild a different plane huh tapui yarana tapui are you sure it's a very nice place, I think. I think I've been there before. You magic, magic, magic. And it like looks sort of like pokes its face around to um, this Larry. Magic. The boy. Has anyone been to the Feywild before? You don't have anything from the Feywild, do you? Me. You're from the Feywild. The boy. Marada reaches into her bag and pulls out the scroll of uh, planar transportation. <gasps> the plane shift scroll? The plane shift scroll. And Alphonse is like, oh, what the, what is, what is this now? This isn't for you. Um, hey, see, let's just... <laughs> <laughs> and, and... <laughs> so you accept um, my, my offer? You would bring me back the, a, a white seed... A, has must be the white seed pod from the ghost orchid. You accept my offer. I will give you a gold, bring back a pod. How much? Ah, uh, 1,000 gold. Each? Yes, each. Didn't if we expect... remember, we remember. <laughs> I didn't exactly expect um, the 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 winged one to to be the one the one about the gold. I'm learning more and more about all of you every second. I love this. Ah. Uh... Then it is a deal. Thank sure. you so much. Uh, you are, you are, this is technically a side quest, Alphonse. Uh, this is not our main goal. <laughs> You're a side quest? 
Oh, and you can see like he his shoulders like slump a bit when you say that and his head drops a bit uh, and he goes I understand you are powerful adventurers uh, but it may be a side quest um, but I hope that within your travels you could fulfill this side quest I mean a lot to me I give my word even if they won't I will bring back your white seed <laughs> thank you so much what is so funny doctor <laughs> yes this is serious it means a lot to me we'll get you sorted it'll be fine Kayla gets it. Um, I shuffle the group away. Was it white seed? Was it was it the phrase white seed? <laughs> was that what it was? <laughs> I, I know what you're like. Uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad to see that the collective age is six. <laughs> um, I shuffle the group away. So that way, um, Alphonse isn't close, close by. Um, and I hold, um, I kind of offer out my hand to the bird, like as in like a may I, like. Yep. Um, and then I, and I open the down. scroll with one hand and I'm like, this is a one way trip. So I hope somebody's got an idea for how we get back. And then I start reading the scroll before anyone can interrupt me. <laughs> okay. And I look, sort of look at the bird like you did her. Um, and uh, and I cast the spell. Plane shift. I plane shift us to the Feywild. So, do you want to describe or uh, how this manifests? Um. Morada, I, I kind of forgot to mention it in her like character description, is like a lioness with like these glowing, like these violet eyes. They don't glow unless she does magic. Um, and she kind of looks at Faye Zari, who is just like, they've, they've known each other for a while, and, and she's often inspired by it, just always in awe of Faye Zari. Um, so she looks she looks around at, at everyone and then looks at the spell and starts reading and her eyes start to glow and they grow brighter and brighter and brighter and the light kind of encapsulates everyone so what Alphonse can see is just like the silhouettes of everyone through this light and then it blinks out and they're gone wow <laughs> they've gone um that's epic um and when uh the light as it grows bright in everyone's eyes so bright that you can't see and then when vision starts coming back um you are not where you were uh the sky is like everything seems a little bit oversaturated plants are more vibrant you're like in a a jungle beside the edge of a lagoon with a thousand foot waterfall at one end tumbling down Psh. I'm just going to move us over to another map uh... oh hold on don't want you guys seeing that stuff Don't look at the stream. Don't look at the stream. You will see things you shouldn't see. I've just got, um, I'm on the roll 20. It's just a black rectangle. Yep. Okay. I'm just going to pop you down. Oop, hold on. Boop. Oops. Boop. Oh, I've put you on the wrong layer, haven't I? Oh, egg. Okay. Ooh. 
Oh hell, we're right in front of this waterfall. It's massive. Oh. Okay. Um. Uh, beep, beep, beep. There's. Uh, I've got some player, some handouts here. Where is it? So you're like at the bottom of the, uh, on the edge of this kind of like lagoon, and that's a waterfall that stretches up a thousand feet. On the side of the Gosoka Tapui. And a Tapui, if you're not familiar, is like a, a flat topped mountain, like a, like a, a mesa. Um, this one is huge. Wow. Uh. Uh, there we go. The infinite staircase is prettier. <laughs> <laughs> the Yanosh vanishes, replaced by the earthy scent of jungle as you emerge and you pop out into a thick rainforest. And the, as vegetation surrounds you, heavy mist hangs in the air, obscuring the top of a spire rising hundreds of feet into the air. No more than a hundred feet away, a roaring waterfall cascades down the tapui, and a well-trodden path twists, twists towards it through the trees. Sites like this, they, uh, they certainly never get old. And that is where we'll end our adventure for this evening. Oh yeah. Oh, in the yeah. Feywild. You're in the Feywild. Yeah, yeah, heck yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to play uh, a second part of this adventure. Um, was it in a week? Is that right? Who knows? You didn't, us, you yep. didn't tell us a date. I didn't you give you a, a date. You gave, us a, you gave us a doodle. We voted and that was it. That was the end of it. All right. Okay. <laughs> I haven't even checked that doodle, but... <laughs> <laughs> we might play this again. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. Next Hopefully. week. Same time, same channel. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Perhaps. Excellent. I'm going to move us over to the Theatre of the Mind and... Uh, it is late here in the UK, um, for me anyway. Uh, some people are probably used to staying up a bit later. Uh, but let's go around. Um, we, we, you can outro, you can say who you are, where people can find you, and just give me one thing that you enjoyed about tonight's session. Uh, so we'll go, we'll go clockwise this time. So we'll start, we'll start with you, Leone. Hello everybody, I am Leone, also known as Glass and Gadget, and I have been Faze Lari, the first shard of Saloon, Planar trapped in another body, kind of miffed about it, not friendly. I am very friendly, however, and you can follow me on all social media at Glass and Gadget, except for on TikTok, where you can follow me at The Gilded Grove. The Gilded Grove is my shop where I make wonderful things like this. Yes, I am available for commission. Uh, and I can work it within any budget, so... Uh, and I sell lots of handmade uh, theatrical adornments, uh, as well as little gifts and trinkets to suit every budget. Uh, I am also a producer for Into the Motherlands, Gen Con Online. I am a game developer. I've just finished work on Destroy All Humans 2, which is released on the 30th. Go play it. I hear it's good. I had some quest cut. I'm very happy. People are complaining. I live off complaints. <laughs> um, other than that, I am the watcher of the TTRPG community. I don't perform often. Uh, I, I tend to just hang out and stuff. And uh, Oh, um, and uh, all these wonderful things, which are now stuck to my keyboard for some reason, 
that I wore today, uh, the gauntlet, the mask and the headdress are all going to be auctioned off for our wonderful, wonderful uh, charity, Sea Shepherd, uh, and you can speak to Evan about that because I just made the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The awesome stuff was so good. Um, oh, was there a moment you particularly liked to, um, tonight? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. The killing blow? It was alright. It was alright. It was alright. Um, Favourite moment has to be free burp. Free I burp. Like burp. Free burp. I like the burp. I yeah. like the fact that Faze Lari also likes the burp. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Faze Lari relates a lot to this burp. Yeah. I like that. Except for now, this burp is now home. <laughs> <laughs> and they are not. Um, and you know what? The description of how that, that shocking moment of where we all thought we had a moment to save the uh, villagers the workers and then we didn't yeah that all, that, that all caught us off guard yeah <laughs> we were just like oh they're not messing around oh, oh no <laughs> oh okay oh well oh yeah. we need to make oh let's make a plan yeah that was that yeah. was also pretty amazing yeah, so, yeah. thank you in general yeah that was good yeah your faces all your faces <laughs> when like they just like ate one and dropped it uh, uh one of the workers it was like oh shit got real <laughs> shit got real real fast <laughs> thank yeah, you we thought we had we thought had, we had a minute to like you know <laughs> throw insults i have no idea what we thought was gonna happen <laughs> but you know throw some shade make witty comments i have no idea but we weren't ready we weren't prepared <laughs> excellent all right ray where can people find you <laughs> Hi, hello, I'm Ray. Um, you can find me at Red Mage Ray. I am a professional game master, a player, content creator, all of that jazz for TTRPGs. Um, you can usually find me, I'm usually scattered on a bunch of channels, but one of the places you can find me is uh, I co-founded and helped run the channel Friends Roll Dice, who does a whole bunch of uh, <clears throat> TTRPG content, whether that be charity games or whether that be just cool people having a stage to tell cool stories um i mean run our regular monday game there the mind of the martyr as well as help with uh keeping things running in the background so um yeah you'll find me here and there guesting on other channels usually for wonderful charity things like this um yeah it's been a rough couple of weeks so a lot of the progress on things is uh, has slowed down but i am also dipping my toes into writing um so i have two ttrpgs on the way uh they should be released within the next couple of months and i'm super excited for uh everyone to see both of those there was a playtest of one of them synthesis on uh the neon casters channel uh and the other one i am still messing around with so uh yeah, I think that's all I need to plug. Oh, and I might be on another D and D game in like an hour and a half, depending on whether the DMs what? on a Minstrel's Tales uh, channel where I play Kyra, a clockwork sorcerer fairy. So, yeah. What? That's like at almost two in the morning. I mean, our regular Monday games at two a.m. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm used to it. Wild as wild. Thank you, Ray um did you have a particular moment that you enjoyed oh, oh. I, I mean i i think the, the, there was a lot of combat in this game uh in this session that combat was quite like i think that the, the flurry of just everyone doing cool shit yeah like everyone just both in terms of like hey we're level 14 amazing but also i really like when combat characterizes characters yeah, yeah, yeah um and immediately seeing everyone's personalities and thought processes reflected in those first few turns was really cool for me yeah yeah because uh the stuff that you could do um everyone described the stuff that they could do so well and just play to their strengths it was great thank you so much taylor uh, I'm gonna do my favorite thing from session up top. Sweet. Um, 
I really, really liked, um, this is going to be so silly, the, the bit where Eva ran along the wall and, like, then dropped in between and was, like, shooting. Yeah. Like, that is, like, Sick. I am, I just, I love, I love action movies. I don't get to watch them enough. I love action movies. And that, to me, was just, like, so cinematic. And I was like, ah. Yes, this is why I like playing D and D for yeah. people to be like, I'm a movie star, and Ray just embodied that that perfectly in that moment, and so that was that was my favorite part. <laughs> um, but yeah, hi, I'm Taylor. Um, I am a TTRPG editor and D and D adventure writer. Usually, I am not on this side of the screen. Um, I tend to write the adventures for people to play. And also, I did the editing for the DM skill Journeys Beyond the Radiant Citadel. So if you like the Atagua setting, it's uh, currently a best gold seller um, on DM Guild. Go check it out. The original writers from Radiant of the jo- Journeys Through the Radiant Citadel wrote additional gazetteers, adventures, encounters... For you to do so you can go and explore Atagua further if you've got journeys through the Radiant Citadel. I'm like, hey, I like this, give me more. Um, yeah, that, that's it. You can find me on Twitter at TaylorAnnNX. I talk about being a parent, I talk about the random DD ideas that I have, and I promote when I'm on charity streams because I'll always, I'll always jump on board if Evan says, hey, do you want to do something? Because I really like playing with him. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Oh, my heart. Thank you so much. Uh, that's pretty. Um, and I, I totally get what you're saying about um about Eva like running around the wall. I was like, holy shit, we got some Lara Croft shit going on here. It was I like wow, top tier, yeah. top tier shit. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, uh, Jacob. Yeah. Hi. Um, I'm Papaya Pariah. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jacob, and I've been a uh, Dark Danger and Dravidi and Um You can find me online at the Outlaw Games. So I don't spend a great deal of time on socials. Uh, yeah, uh, today's uh, t- today this morning for me uh, has been really fun. Um, my favorite part was just been just playing. Playing the whole game with you guys, uh, the behind the scenes uh, as well um, for Leone, like creating that uh, setup is was amazing. Yeah, um, so good. Uh, oh, yeah, the second favorite bit was uh, Base Lowry bringing back uh, Alphonse's white seed. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty buggers. <laughs> Look, there's a reason we have kids. <laughs> I don't. Pass, pass this on. Yes, I, I, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was. I knew that was what was going on. <laughs> uh, hilarious. Thanks, Ray. Um, and uh, Thank I've been. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, I've been your DM. I'm Evan, aka Moldy Nerd, on Twitch and Twitter. Uh, I am a TDRPG pro- producer sometimes, uh, and performer sometimes, and a variety streamer sometimes. So, uh, but everything's come together. I've got to play with these awesome people. Um, do you know what? If you're if you if you're raising money for a charity which we're doing tonight, she, uh, Sea Shepherd, you get to, like, uh, it's, it's almost like, I'm going to ask people, just out the blue, if they want to do some some charity work. And, uh, you know, sometimes, and it, sometimes it happens. And tonight is an example of that. I get to play with people I haven't played before. And uh, and I think, you know, make make friends. And like the, the build up to this game has been incredible. Uh, Discord, our Discord channel has been been popping off. It's been it's been hilarious. It's been a journey. Uh, but I want to just thank all of you for for playing with me tonight. I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed your company and your role play. Um, thank you so much. What's your favorite part? Uh, my favorite part, um, I really liked when you when we when we all when you all stepped out uh, of the Concord Jewel. <laughs> it was really silly. It was right at the beginning, uh, and p- your different reactions to being on the on this plane. Uh, it was like, oh, it's hot, sweaty, uh, and like 
so and um, Murata was like, "Yes, yeah, stretch." Uh, and you're like, "And Drac was home," uh, and um, uh, uh, Eva was just like, "Oh, in the dirt." I'm like, "Get get on with it," uh, and it was just like, "You had a bug in your boot." <laughs> I was just like, uh, it was only a little moment, but uh, it was a. I liked it. It's like you've you've travelled across planes. This is and you you've travelled two planes in this one session. So yeah, that was pretty oh, cool. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, multi-planar travellers. Excellent. Um, I mean, technically, I already was beforehand. This is true. But, this just, is... but I didn't travel in a. Sp- Spinning gemstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gemstone, if you think about it. You were like, oh, your eyes focus on the horizon. I was like, oop, oop. Uh, 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 pick one, babe. So many, many eyes. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and thank you, chat, for being so generous. Um, really appreciate um, all the support that you've shown tonight. Uh, even though um, a lot of it was disadvantages on me, um, I appreciate it nonetheless because it's fundraising, right? <laughs> and those carry over into next session, right? Yeah, they do. They do carry over. Does I will that not be... inspiration carry over too? Yeah, of course it is. If you haven't used it, it carries right. over. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ray. Yeah. Uh... Not saying anything. <laughs> all, you, all you have to do, Ray, next time. all you have to do <laughs> is wear a freaking good on your back and your your gold. All right, that's all you have to do. All right, all right. I, have a, I have box. a plan. Yep, no, I'm she gonna can pull get, it off. I'm yeah. gonna get some some metal spikes on the side. I'm gonna yeah, get a big yeah. gold. Double oh, double no, hand crossbows. I don't know if I could replicate it. <laughs> your makeup was cool. It. Got it. All right, well, I'll figure something out. <laughs> uh, thanks, everyone. Um, it's too late to raid because I oh, I don't want to talk to anyone else. I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's Bad selfish, I know. <laughs> <laughs> just being honest, just being me. Um, all right, everyone, thank you so much. Good night. I hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully stay tuned for the uh, auctions on the cool shit that we've got. And uh, we'll maybe see you next week. All right, bye, everyone.